Agenda item, public comment. Is there anyone here or joining us virtually that would like to speak at public <coughs> comment? I'm going to rely on you, Mr. Gilberto. I am not seeing anybody, Madam Chair. Okay. All right. With no one stepping forward, we'll move on to the next order of business, which is the Fall annual October Town meeting review and discussion of submitted articles and to vote on our recommendation, which is at 25 in the packet for the board members. Thank that's where it begins. M Madam Chair, I am um, oh, having yeah, a no. bit of a technical difficulty with regard to displaying the warrant. Okay. So if it's okay with you, could we go right to Article 10, the wastewater presentation? There's a separate presentation for that matter sure. um, on the warrant. Um, no the other nine no. articles will actually be pretty quick to review, I think. So All I just, right. I'm having an issue with accessing the warrant to put it up on the screen there for everybody here. All right. So we, we, we can certainly do that. Do you want to just get through a couple of the ones that are regular items, like Article 1? Sure. I can, I can do them. I just can't put them on the screen. Yes. So I think we could just quickly review the ones sure. that are, because so we, we typically would, you know, you want us to vote on these. Uh, I have a series of motions for yes. them as All well, right. and I can Why offer. Why don't we just go through them on paper? Okay. Like the olden days. <laughs> okay. And I apologize to those at home trying to watch I don't on know Zoom. If you're but all y'all remember the olden days when we used paper and our part of it. notepads. And stuff. <laughs> we all got right, a young so one here. Our, article one is a standard article <clears throat> that we begin with to hear and act on reports of town officers and committees. And that's it's self-explanatory. And the recommendation would be to vote to recommend. All right. Do we, do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 1 here and act on reports of town officers and committees. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Article 2 is prior year bills. We typically wait on this when we hear from our um, from our controller, our mm -hmm. finance director, excuse me, will, as we approach the town meeting time frame, we do a recommendation during that point. Is that your recommendation, Mr. Yes, to, to recommend a town meeting, All yes, right. Madam Chair. Article three is to appropriate money to the stabilization fund. Madam Chair, the board customarily will vote to recommend a town meeting. Oh, Chair. excuse me, I'm sorry, do I have a motion on that? Article? Madam Chair, I move to recommend the town meeting. Article two, prior year bills. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. All right, Article 3 is to appropriate money to the stabilization fund. Madam Chair, through you, I do not intend on uh, making a recommendation for a transfer to this fund at this time, uh, but we'll uh, certainly evaluate um, what our available funds at the town meeting are, including free cash. So my recommendation would be to vote to recommend at town meeting. All right. Madam Any Chair, questions? Okay. Sorry. Do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to recommend the town meeting, Article 3, appropriate money to the stabilization fund. <laughs> second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Article 4 is appropriate money to the capital improvement stabilization fund. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I believe we are forecasting to the finance director and Mr. Keller a $250,000 transfer, which we anticipate will come from free cash. Free cash not yet being certified, but uh, historically we have sufficient funds in that balance for that transfer. So my recommendation is to vote to recommend. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 4, appropriate money to the Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund. Second. 
Motion by Mr. Studo, <coughs> second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Article 5, appropriate money to the solid waste stabilization fund. Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, through you, this is, article was held over from the um, spring annual town meeting. Um, at this stage, I believe the intent would be to transfer the funds, which will now have flowed through to free cash. I don't have that dollar amount available, but I do recommend that the board vote to recommend the article. <laughs> and again, for those who don't know, this is to take any of the remaining funds from the budget for solid waste from last fiscal year and set it aside into a stabilization fund to cover those costs. Okay. Do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 5, appropriate money to the solid waste stabilization fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Article 6, appropriate money to the participating funding arrangement fund. Mr. Ma Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you. This is a customary article for fall town meeting where we transfer funds that are left to the health insurance operating budget to a stabilization <coughs> fund. This represents the town's share of funds remaining for the prior fiscal year. The employee's share is also reserved uh, in a specific account by the treasurer as well um, in, in, in the corresponding percentage. We don't generally have this number available until we get towards the end of September when the three-year, the three-month runout for claims has ended. It's generally between two hundred fifty and three hundred fifty thousand dollars. I do think we could responsibly at this point vote to recommend, uh, despite not having a final number. Okay. Do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article Six, appropriate money to the participating funding arrangement fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, <coughs> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Article 7 is to amend the fiscal year 2022 operating budget. Madam Chair, through you, we do anticipate that there will be some amendments to the budget forthcoming. Uh, among them, um, amendments in the forecast for revenue um, related to the Parks and Recreation Enterprise, as well as some uh, potential um, um, modifications or reorganization in particular positions that I'll speak to later on. I would recommend the board vote to recommend the article at this stage and um, we'll certainly have more detailed information on September 20th. So recommend the town, town, recommend town, town meeting or recommend? Yes, a town meeting. Madam Chair, I move to recommend the town meeting, Article 7, amend FY 2022 operating budget. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Article 8, rescind authorizations to borrow. Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, um, I do not know of a specific rec uh, rescission that will be pending, but we generally hold this article open for a recommendation until we get to town meeting, so my recommendation would be to vote to recommend at town meeting. Madam Chair, I move to recommend at town meeting Article 8, rescind authorizations to borrow. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. <coughs> All uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Aye. Article nine is to amend the fiscal year 2022 capital budget. Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, through you, we are not anticipating any specific amendments to capital projects. This is an article that uh, we began um, carrying last year to provide any opportunity that may be required. I'm not expecting anything at this point in time. Mr. Keller, I'm looking to you. I don't think we know of anything specific. There was one project that we were looking at for bridge construction that we thought might come back up, but my understanding is that it's still pending review with the state. So at this point, I think the right action would probably be to vote to recommend at town meeting, knowing that it's probably going to be recommending the pass over. Mr. Studo. Madam Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting, Article 9, amend FY 2022 capital budget. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, seconded by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Okay, Article 10, appropriate money <coughs> for wastewater planning, design, and engineering, and that is up on the screen for all those who are joining us. Madam Chair, um, as the board members have heard from Mr. Studo and Mr. O'Leary over the past couple of meetings, a substantial amount of work has gone on with regard to the wastewater project over the, um, the course of this summer. Um, this represents uh, a more detailed update for the board and for the community, as well as the details of a request for 
funding at the October town meeting. Through you, Madam Chair, uh, if there's no objection, I would turn it over to the director of the Department of Public Works, Joe Parisi, um, who's joined by the town engineer, John Clipfeld. Thank you for being here, John. Uh, Michael Stein and uh, Kevin Olson from, Olson, I got that right, right? From um, Wright Pierce, our consulting engineers. Um, not here this evening is um, Rob Pierce, who I think, Rob Williams, excuse me, a number, a number of you have seen at meetings before, is just unable to join us, but has been part of our conversations. Through you, Madam Chair, may sure. I turn it over to the DPW yes, director? Thank you for joining us. Welcome, and please take it away. Thank you. Um, you Madam Chair, I, I would ask, I got a, couple, a little bit of feedback. The more everyone, including myself, can project their voices, the better for those who are participating <coughs> by Zoom or otherwise. <coughs> so thank you. I know you have a nice loud voice, Mr. Parisi. <laughs> I, I can project pretty well, so, <laughs> so thank you. Uh, yeah, so I'd like to uh, take an opportunity to present um, the uh, wastewater system expansion project. Um, we are planning and have been planning for a number of year, not, years now to do a uh, wastewater uh, system uh, to connect to the uh, Greater Lawrence Sanitary District uh, or some other potential uh, connection. But we are now focused on a project that uh, gives us a connection to the GLSD. So I want to sort of uh, show you what the sewer collection system looks like within the town of North Reading. So we are planning to have a collection system that uh, runs along Main <coughs> Street, uh, Route 28. Uh, there you'll see um, a, uh, an extension down North Street, uh, past town offices, and all the way down to the end of Lowell Road where there's some uh, dense housing development down at that end. Continuing down Main Street, we'll get to, I believe it's Park Street, and travel uh, towards Concord Street in the industrial park area. There are a few parcels that are at the very end there that are, are already connected to the MWRA system, but uh, there are a number of parcels along Concord Street that are not you know, certainly connected to sewer, and this would provide a great opportunity to have uh, a, a public sewer system available to the, those properties and create some, I think, um, great um, opportunities for development of uh, commercial industrial properties there as well. So, just flipping to um, what the um, construction looks like. Uh, out of town, we're, we're collecting all of the uh, sewer uh, flow from all the connected properties into uh, pump stations and forcing that flow. Uh, we looked at a number of different routes actually, so we, there are some opportunities to sort of utilize some existing infrastructure in Andover, but we found you know, that there weren't always easy routes uh, to where uh, we wanted to, to get to. Um, there are issues with uh, the size of existing pipes and work that needed to be done, roads that or more recently paid because of, because of other issues or, or uh, work that had to be done from gas explosions. and So ultimately, we, um, we did see an opportunity, a great opportunity to stay um, in the state highway um, system, um, up, you know, coming off of Route 28 onto Route 125 and then uh, onto 114 to get us to the connection point in uh, North Andover. But uh, I guess the the attraction of this route certainly was an opportunity to uh, work with uh, MassDOT to um, have part of our project um, bid out within their project. Uh, there is a time frame that we certainly um, have to meet and, and can meet, uh, but we want to incorporate some work that's in that intersection because they're, they're doing improvements there um, and we are taking advantage of uh, you know, savings through the bid process and construction process um, that they will go through for their project. Excuse me for interrupting you. What, what am I looking? What are we looking? So at? this is this is basically the border of um, um, North Reading on the far <laughs> left um, okay. with Andover, and you'll see a blue line coming out. I don't know yes. if it's quite clear uh, enough, but that's the Andover. <clears throat> okay. So yeah. So. Uh, there's a, a stretch. Yeah, okay, there's a stretch of 28 there, and then we'll come off of that to, to 125, and then come up to the 125-114 intersection, and then from there 
it goes on to the connection point in at the plant. Okay. So we are, uh, our connection would be Merrimack. through right 28, here. right? Through 20, 28 Correct. to Andover. Correct. And I'll just back up, you know, one slide. So you can see where this blue line sort of exits on the on the right there, yeah. and that connects up with that point right there. <coughs> okay. Oh, yeah. So you're gonna go right by Tokyo and then down yeah, okay. to 125. All right. So. There is, um, as far as uh, collection pipe, there's approximately five miles of, of um, collection pipe in the in-town portion of the work, and seven miles to get to, from the border to uh, the uh, GLSD. Yeah. Question? Can you go back to the first slide? So where is the pipe from, where does the Concord Street pipe connect to? So that dead ends at that, at that okay. location. And the same with um, the one that goes to um, the JT Berry that stops there? Yeah, so there's dead end points at, at uh, the end of Lowell Road, at the uh, end of Concord Street, and also there's a terminus near um, Park in uh, Maine. Okay. So who are you, Madam Chair? Joe? I mean, this is a lay person here. question. Yeah, so, so. Uh, so the end of Concord Street, everything is flowing towards what towards 28 okay. from that side. That's what so it yeah, it's a dead end, but it's all flowing down <laughs> towards 28. That's my next yeah. question, all right. And the same thing with Lowell Road over okay. there. That's flowing towards 28, and everything <laughs> on 28 is flowing through combination of gravity and pump okay. systems okay. to essentially the point where North Reading meets Andover right here. Okay, so everything in town comes to that point. Thank you, John. So moving back here, I, I think we've uh, sort of defined the route that we believe is uh, most beneficial to the town, and we are working towards, you know, getting information that we need to design, um, you know, the section at the uh, 114 and 125 intersections. Uh, so that we can be prepared to, to present information to MassDOT for their um, project um, bid documents. There will be some surveying necessary. There will be some um, soil probes to be done as well, see what's under the surface, and um, gather that information, use that in the design, and um, again, be prepared to um, present that information to MassDOT to use in the project bid documents. Another layperson question while we're on this. Did you already evaluate what other infrastructure is in this routing? Yeah, so there's, there's uh, some understanding as to what's there. Um, we definitely uh, need to know more on, uh, I, I believe it is uh, 114 and perhaps sections of 125, but there's um, the probes will give us some underground utility information as well, or some obstructions, I think. Um, there might be some concrete um, that we're concerned about. You're trying to see. <coughs> that's what this money is intended Co to correct. cover. Correct. Okay. Right. So we'll, we'll understand, you know, what, what the uh, topos are around the routes and the depths that we may need to um, have the sewer in the locations of the, of the force mains based on all the field information that we gather. So, Madam Chair, just as, a, as far as you know, in town, we have a pretty good idea as to what's already in the ground in town. You know, as far as utilities, those are buried, those are above the ground. Uh, it's a question of what's the bedrock, where's it going to be placed. So, in town, we have a pretty good idea. Um, 114, which is the uh, Mass DOT project, they have a very good idea as to what's there and what room and where our piping would go. So. That main portion will just be piggybacking on their plans and what they already have and already know. We'll tell them what we need, and they'll tell us where we'll go, pretty much. Uh, 125 is pretty much just a, the best of our knowledge, there's little or no utilities in the, in the highway at all. Uh, it was an old concrete highway, which again presents some challenges in relation to, you know, digging and probing. But this is what the, the probing is going to tell us and the, uh, the borings, which we're going to do throughout the entire route here uh, will tell us exactly how deep, what are we going to hit for bedrock, it will help us get a better estimate in relation to what the cost is going to be to put the pipes in the ground. So without the borings, we don't know, right? So we're going to do the borings with this appropriation, which will tell us more definitively what our costs are going to be to put pipes in the ground. 
Okay, so I'll continue on. So here's the anticipated project schedule. <coughs> So we're looking to uh, start off with, with permitting uh, on the, you know, immediately upon uh, town meeting approval of funding. Uh, we can also at the same time be looking to uh, prepare, you know, gather information and prepare design for mass DOT section of, of the work. Again, that's at the intersection of 125 and 114. Uh, you can see there that's well that's going to be about a year and a half you can see that we're trying to make a, um, a mass DOT bidding time frame of the fourth quarter of 2023 so we will um, certainly get going on that immediately and be prepared for that time frame we also would be doing preliminary design for the remaining sections of the project areas that's both in town and out of town um, beyond the, the limits of the mass DOT project that will take a parallel track and also uh, we will uh, proceed into a final design after that, taking a year's time to complete, getting into bidding, and then construction will also um, you know, obviously follow with a, about a two year time frame. All told, we're, we're looking at about five years there from start to finish. So we think that's that's a, a schedule that is uh, reasonable. Um, you know, there are certainly some unknowns that we, we have to figure out, and I think you know we get started um, now. We can certainly be in uh, the position we need to be to get the project started and completed by uh, mid of 2026. Mr. Walden, do you mean connecting to the top of 28? Talking, talking about completing the whole thing from in town work to the connection whole thing, to the whole thing. The whole thing. Whole thing. And are you going to, are you planning to phase like you do? Did you say phase? Phase uh, in, in town, are you going to phase it? We're, we're not going to phase it. We're going to have simultaneous uh, design and, and construction going on. There's going to be the mass DOT work that would be done under um, a, a project uh, that is managed, bid and managed by mass DOT with uh, certain components of our project within the limits of their work. But the rest of the, uh, the work outside of their limits will be our projects to, to manage, to bid, and um, to construct. Mr. Percy, would that be at the slides? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. This, this anticipated slides? project schedule? Okay. Yeah, it does All show right. that. Okay, this so. This is the end of your slide presentation. Uh, I have a couple more slides. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And does anyone have any other questions to this point? We're good to go on. Right. So this uh, shows uh, again the uh, the project components and some some costs, and you know the roughly three million dollars that you know we are the rounded three million dollars that we're requesting for uh, the article, and I'll just uh, sort of highlight that. So we're looking at in town uh, wastewater collection systems. So we're looking at that number to be about a million and sixty-three thousand uh, dollars. We also have the wastewater conveyance system to the GLSD. That's approximately one point you know, six three million dollars. We're, we're uh, in addition to that, we have the uh, legal administrative um, the finance costs of two hundred thousand estimated and subtotaling. Or totaling 2.89, I believe that was right. So again, rounded to a three. So just in relation to the uh, the two hundred thousand dollars, I think it's important to note that approximately half of that is going to be uh, the investment is going to be in updating the plan that we had previously done to determine the economic value of putting sewerage on Route 28 and Congress Street. And basically, you know, why are we doing this? That will help answer what's why are we doing this. What's know? the ROI? Yeah, right. what's, the re what's the return on investment, you know, uh, for this project? So we think it's important to uh, to appropriate the money to do that before we ask people to go and appropriate a significantly more money yeah. to make sure that they understand what the return on the investment is going to be. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to move on to the next slide? Yeah. Okay. So so yeah. <laughs> I just uh, wanted to sort of um, summarize. I, I guess the uh, the remaining money would be uh, requested about a year from now. 
is the October 2020. I know. I'm sorry. Let's get that I'm sorry. Yeah, this is Charlotte. Um, I think it will be clear to the audience and the voters and my dog if the 200,000 was broken out so that it was obvious that 100,000 was going to go to um, uh, showing the, you know, if you know the income of the army was up. Mr. Percy, did you hear that? And for those who are virtually attending it, Mrs. Herbert said she thinks it would be better for that section to be broken apart into what's going to go to legal and what's going to go to this sort of plan updating, finance plan updating. We, we certainly can do that. We can add a, uh, a, another line on it, breaking out the, yes. uh, the updated study. Updated study. Yes, Mr. Mr. Kelleher. Can you go back one slide? Yeah, your, your, your chart. We were just talking about of why are we doing this and does it make sense is the return on investment. It doesn't even appear on your anticip anticipated project schedule. It would seem to me that is the first step of the whole project. Why are we doing it? What are we going to get out of it? You're going down Concord Street in hopes of getting a whole bunch of business on Concord Street to into it or to abandon what they have and build something new. You're doing the same on, on Main Street, and it looks like you're going to service the Bulti project and the apartments. But the study of what the return on investment is and why we should be doing it isn't even on your chart. It doesn't make any sense to me. And I don't know that $100,000 is the right amount. And how was that determined? If that's what's really in there. It didn't, it didn't show it on your chart. You said you were buying five properties and you put $200,000. But then you'll be with that. So I, I can say that we have uh, reached out to the consultant um, that produced the first uh, study. And um, so they are working up a proposal. We have a, a rough estimate of what that is. So we're, we're still carrying, you know, an estimate. But Wait a minute. Who is that consultant? FXO. That did the first study. How long ago? 2011. 2011 or so. Or so. Okay. You know, before obviously before I was here, and I think also um, before Danielle as well. Um, but we both have reached out and explained uh, where the town is at at the moment as far as its um, uh, desire to move forward with a sewer uh, project that would bring some economic development opportunities, and they are looking at. Um, you know, the, the scope of work that we presented them and we'll come back with their, their proposal. So it basically, but so basically getting back to Ms. Keller, Mrs. Earl was pointed, that should be right here in quarter four on your <coughs> listing, right? Yeah, we, we would be not going to do, do anything oh, no. about oh, getting no. that in place. That, that's correct. That's going to happen, you know, as soon as, soon as the money right? is appropriated. Yeah. Okay. Right. So how much of that, I mean, these guys um, what did the study cost in the first place, money. do you know? Uh, I believe that it was, was it roughly $50,000? $50,000 back in 2011. This is a much larger job. We're, yes, we're, we're getting much more um, information and, and details. But it also covers a larger geographic area. So Mrs. Herbert saying it's a... This is a much larger job, and it's also covering a much larger area, geographic area. So do you have an understanding of base, a basic estimate of what that particular update to the previous study would be, or is it going to be a whole new study? Well, there's certainly some information uh, that needs to be updated from what was originally there, but there's more information that needs to be gathered that wasn't before. So I think, um, you know, certainly it'll cost more, and we understand that to be the case, but we haven't had enough just yet. Is that correct? Just a ballpark of 100000 and um, plus some additional work that we wanted to add that is not covered by what this particular firm does, that they advise that we seek, um, you know, for that work to be done as well. Mr. Gilbert, are they a vetted contractor, or, or do we have to put that out? 
to bid because if they're just going on what was done, anybody can do that. Look at that old study and then answer to the questions that need to be answered to further plan or scope this out. I'm anticipating a qualifications based bid process for it. Okay. Um, I, I haven't looked through the procurement process that we followed in 2011 prior to my tenure, but um, I, I don't see any exception. For that, I, I would foresee it would be a qualifications-based review okay. um, that, that we would do. So basically, reach it out. I think you would, you have to really do that with more than one vendor, right? Yeah, I mean, we would be advertising for proposals, okay. and um, we would be required to put public notice of that out there. Yes. And whoever responds, obviously, would be evaluated independently based on qualifications, and then a contract awarded um, based on that and the combination of their price proposal. What did you think the timeline for that would be? So uh, I've heard that the work itself was about six months, and I'm, I'm looking to the town planner and to the DPW director. Do I have that? Uh, is that accurate? The, the first time, or what we would what, we're, what we're projecting for the, the, the start to finish for the contractor to do the work? I think that's reasonable. Yeah, a six-month time. And I'm probably, you're looking at a probably 30 to 60 days lead time to get them under contract. So where would the brackets be on here? Because they have extra lines in there. You could add a line in for, for mm -hmm. updated, amend, amend, updated planning, right? right? So you could add that in there. Where would you see that going? Q4, Q1, Q2, Q3? So we would, yeah, we would uh, Q4, look at... Q4, Q1 is what right, it sounds Q4. like. We would, we would have a uh, qualifications uh, process and then we'll have six months of um, the actual work. So we would go. You could add that into this chart, right? Yeah. 2023 third right. quarter. All right. So does that answer, Mrs. Herbert, what you are, and Mr. Kelleher, what you are? Somewhat, but I think it also skews the anticipated project schedule that now needs to be pushed out because there's no way you can start permitting in quarter four of 21 if you're not going to have the response from the consultants looking at the feasibility of, uh, of all of this uh, until uh, possibly even quarter two of 22. Uh, I don't know if that. I it's, think a, it's not a feasibility study yeah, right. that we're I looking to do. What it is. Okay, I now I have the answer. We shouldn't be doing the permitting before we completed that other test. Okay, let. All right, now I have. Four hands to my right raise. Who <laughs> wants to talk first? Mr. <coughs> Gilberto, we'll let you go first. I, I'll just speak to the intention of what's before the board this evening. I, I don't think that we were looking to tie the outcome of the financial review and the property valuation to the decision-making process for planning for sewer. And I mean, I, the, either of the board members who are involved in the conversations, I, I don't think that that was the intention in, in bringing this this evening. No. I think we feel it's important work for informing a $115 million decision, but I, I don't think it was intended to be determinative as to whether the rest of the effort would go more. No, but it could go on that same graph. Mr. O'Leary. Agreed. Mr. O'Leary. Right. It, once, once again, it's important for everybody to understand that this, is not, this has nothing to do with the feasibility study. It's already been determined that what we're looking at and what we can do is feasible. That determination has been made. Right. What we're doing now is we're running in tandem with the mass, because of the mass DOT opportunity, we're running it in a timeline in tandem with them so that we can keep pace with their project and be a part of it and enjoy the benefits of the economies of scale of piggybacking on their project rather than going yes. it alone and waiting an additional 10 years. Because they, won't let, us tear up, they the won't let us tear water. up the street again once they hot top it over. So anyway, so yes. uh, to Mr. Gilberto's point, we also recognize and recognize that it's also important to understand the return on the investment when we go to the people and to the public and ask them for, for a big project. But because of the time of the mass DOT, um, it's important that we move forward with that progress, assuming that we're going to move forward at all. Um, the study that's going to be updated, again, will give us some more hard numbers in relation to uh, what can we envision? Obviously, the marketplace has changed in relation to the land use uh, on Route 28 and Congress Street than what it was in 2011. So it's important to get that data and to have people informed uh, before they make the big decision to buy into this whole project. So um, this, again, is an important investment that we need to make right now in order to make an informed decision moving forward, along with keeping pace with the Mass DOT. 
uh, process. As far as permitting goes, we need to, we have an obligation. This is all part of the water and wastewater deal that we have with Andover and with the state. If you recall, uh, some of the people in the room here, you know, we were running in tandem with the permitting for water and wastewater, in tandem, and then we decided to split it because the water <coughs> thing was moving forward, it was more critical for us, and we had less understanding as to exactly where we're going to go. We knew we wanted to go to Greater Lawrence Sewage, but how are we going to go there, how are we going to get there, um, didn't get us off the hook from being required to finish the FEIR permitting process. <coughs> so we still have to do that. We have an obligation to do it, we must do it, and we must complete it. The state allowed us to split it off at this point. This steps up the timeline uh, for us in relation to getting the permitting done for the wastewater portion of the FEIR. So we're looking to complete that anyway, and that's something that needs to be completed anyway. Whether we move forward with this project or not, we still have to have a plan for wastewater, whether we put a system in or not. The state wants to know, what are you going to do with all the water that you get from Andover and the Merrimack River? Okay. So Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Thank you. Mr. Do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I, I mean, here's what I would say, and maybe it can save us all a lot of time. There's going to be a lot of questions where without this design, we will not have an answer. So you, we can ask them, we can talk about them, we can talk about a lot, but this design will give us an idea of what needs to be done. Also, I'd like to add that that $115 million number was $20 million more when we first started. The more we're digging in, the better it's getting. Hopefully it doesn't reverse the other way. But to me, the design will answer a lot of questions. And the way I see it is that there's, because we asked all the same of these questions and it always came back to, well, we need the design to answer that question. We need the design to answer that question. And we can go through that exercise and it's fine because we have to, but I think that to piggyback to the point, the design is gonna give us though a yes or no and what's important about that is that there's a lot of other pending issues, not just in front of the select board of wastewater, but even with the community planning commission where there's a lot of big developers and players waiting for the results of this. So we, you know, it's kind of, it, it, it's almost bigger than wastewater at this point. It just, it took me a little bit of time to see it. So that's my two cents that, you know, the, this design, and the catalyst, again, is that the mass DOT came and is going to allow us to piggyback and hopefully we can even put those estimated savings, which are substantial, in front of town meeting, which I think are going to be important. Not just the ROI, but how much you're saving because mass DOT is allowing us to do this, that, you know, maybe when it comes to this timeline, for the first time in, you know, municipal government history, things can be done a little bit faster because we have to be on mass DOT schedule for something. So maybe what 10 years ago, it's like, you know, to your point, Mr. Hilbert, where, well, how are we gonna do the study and then the permitting, but maybe it's just something that because of that timeline, we have to figure it out. So, okay. you know. All right, thank you. So there's, there's two different, there's a design element that needs to be done here, but there's also a return on investment study that needs to be done. So we're talking about two different things. So, okay, Mrs. is Well, I don't, I don't think that anybody disagrees that the 2.8 million needs to be spent in order for the town to make an educated decision about whether to go forward with this entire project. There's no one that disagrees with that. I think the question, um, that I've heard from a number of people is why? And I think that's what the uh, $100,000 to upgrade the study will help partially answer, not entirely. Because we don't know what the world is going to look like in 2026. And maybe everybody will be just clamoring like crazy to build in the military. And maybe they'll have decided to go to church. So it's a fraction, you don't really know. But we all understand that in order to make an informed decision, you do have to do, um, you do have to uh, vote for Article 9 on the line. But, a, but a piece of that is also updating and the, uh, sorry. May I just give a quick response to that? Uh, no, let's Please. just, we need <laughs> to second. move on. And I, Mr. Keller's hand was raised, so let me let Mr. Keller but chip in. Follow up to what you said. You said there are developers that are, I'm not gonna quote you, but I'll paraphrase you. 
in the wings, ready to do something clamoring for this. I think it would be useful to the town, to the, to the voters, to have some sense of what that is. I know you probably can't identify individuals. There are, there are no agreements made. There may be letters of intent. I don't know. But if there really is that pent-up demand for whatever we could be doing along Crockett Street or Main Street, and I think that ought to be incorporated and, and verified in whatever study is going to be done. Because that, that's, that's really important to this. Feasibility is not going to inform anybody about whether or not you build it, they'll help. It'll tell you that it's feasible to build it and it can be built within a, a reasonable, uh, reasonably close to whatever the budget is. Okay, that's what the feasibility says. It's not going to tell you that that uh, that somebody wants to build a, some build condos or apartments or uh, restaurants or whatever. But if you have that information, that ought to be part of the study. Can I clarify my comment? Yeah. Please. Okay. Quick. So quickly, just to clarify, please. what I meant by that is not so much that if you get sore, we're going to do all these things, but there's a, uh, specifically to Winter and Maine, okay, the largest property owner has put any conversation of buying, selling, or what have you on hold until we solve the sewer question, fact. So to me, that's something important because it's important to the community, the CPC, which I believe in a form of that project. So what I'm saying though is that, you know, can we go up and down Main Street and get pen to paper? I don't think a lot of people can answer that question, to Mrs. Herbert's point. Who knows what the world will look like? But again, it's something where, unfortunately, because of the mass DOT timeline, we may have to put some, uh, the cart before the horse when it comes to the ROI study. I mean, it's just, we can't miss that deadline, my understanding is, right? You can't tell mass DOT to move theirs. So unless you have a, a suggestion for us to say that's a mass DOT. All right. We're not going to, let's not get into a back and forth on this, but we do already have a fair amount. We also already have a fair amount of businesses along these corridors who we've, we've had a board working studies previously, which work directly, you're talking about winter, working directly, consulting with those businesses about this. So we already have a fair amount of businesses within the community. I'm a little surprised that it's going to cost that much because all you really need to do is take a ride up 114, take a ride up 28, take a ride up 125 and see what we have and then go to Andover and see what they have, go into Lawrence and see what they have and you could just take pictures and show the difference. But setting that aside, we're, we already have a fair amount of this that's been looked into to, to begin with, so whoever you do bring on board, or we would bring on board if we fund this, is you know way ahead of the game with all the studies that have been funded already. So so that's good. So, but yes, yeah, so all this. Let's not go back and forth on this. I like Mrs. Hurlbut saying. I think we're all in agreement. This is a a great idea, and I don't think the general public may be aware of all of the effort and hours and time that's been put into this already, not just by select board members and by our team and our experts, by the other boards and commissions that have been looking at this. So now it's finally coming to fruition as these articles. So we do really want to hear more of your presentation to be able to move forward with at least voting on recommendations on it. And I'm almost wrapped up. I will allow. No, it's okay. This is important to yes. take your time. So. I just don't want us getting in a debate. I want to make sure you're heard so that we can have a, the full information to be able to take a decision on this. Thank you. All right, so, so I think I've completed the, uh, the project schedule that we anticipate. And um, so I'm just going to flip to the next screen. Uh, again, just to sort of <clears throat> summarize, we have a, a, an article now uh, for the October 4th town meeting that is requesting you know, we should round that to a $3 million number um, to complete what's uh, sort of shown there, some, some preliminary design, engineering, and permitting for both the in-town and out-of-town work and some other, um, you know, 
legal, administrative, and finance plan, which is inclusive of the study update. We'll do a breakout of that and have that prepared. Um, the rest of the, ba of the balance of uh, the funding for the final design, the construction, and the construction administration would come in the uh, October 22 meeting, uh, fall town meeting, so a year from now. So, you know, that's our, our schedule of um, funding needs, and I think we will have um, just get there. Um, information, certainly from the $3 million uh, request now, that would lead us to, towards, you know, the final design and construction. Okay. Is that your final slide? No, I do have right. one more. <laughs> you know, get there now. All right, so funding, financing, oh, timeline. This so, is the important one. This, this, yeah, know. this is sort of summarizes it. So, so one thing to note is, is we do have an existing, you know, it's, it's not for a lot of money, but, it, but it's an application pending for the Massachusetts One Stop Design uh, Permit. And um, so we you know, hope to have some good news on that, but. That's 335, $335,000. So it's not insignificant either. It, it's $335,000. Oh, got it. So it's, it's a little bit more than I thought. So that's, that's you know, good news. And that's from the state? Is that a state available grant? And, and, and that's free and clear if we get So maybe Danielle can, can oh. expand on that. She had the application um, Yes, uh, the application for the grant that we requested was to um, help support the funding of design. Money that it, there's no match. That right. So um, Danielle is saying the application that that you wrote, all right, Danielle, right. our planner, is the 335. It's free and clear. We don't have to make a match, and it's going to be you, you know, intended to be used for design. Design, right? Correct. Mr. Gilberto has his hand raised. Just I'm just repeating because I don't know if everyone can hear. And everyone has the mask too, so it makes it difficult to hear. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. <laughs> that's okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, no, that's helpful, the repeating of the questions, I think, especially for those who are at home trying to follow along via Zoom. Um, the, the grant application that Ms. McKnight prepared with the help of Mr. Parisi and our consultants at Wright Pierce, that predates the urgency of the Mass DOT conversation. We knew that there was going to be a next phase of work that needed to be done. We didn't know exactly what that was going to be. Um, the timing is very good because now we do know exactly where, where we're at and what needs to be done. And as Ms. McKnight indicated, um, there's no match required for that grant funding. We are awaiting an answer on it, and I can tell you that I have been in touch with Representative Jones to make sure that the Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development is aware that our sort of concept is now a much more focused and urgent need. Um, so we're optimistic. Um, this program um, and related programs we've had success with in the past, particularly the $3 million MassWorks water grant funding that we got, um, this is for design. There would be a separate conversation for construction-related funding. Thank you, Madam Chair. So Chair. what you're saying, based on the funding being granted from that particular agency, is that there would be an expectation of housing accompanying this infrastructure addition to the town. Um, I believe the program is housing or economic development okay. focused. Yes. And that would be the purpose of that, that great, uh, you know, return on investment study, right? That's going to focus in on that as well, that right? Be so so there, there's two components of, of work that will inform this. I think that that work will inform some of the development potential and the value for it. There's an, another component, which is the work the Planning Commission's been doing already on I'm that just area. I'm going to ask yeah. that because the application's in, so you already have done a, a lot of this kind of footwork, right, to be able to tell the Commonwealth. We've already been looking at this, studying this, working with businesses, potential businesses, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's really key that, that people know that it, this isn't just, we're not just starting out at square one right now. It's been in the works for a long, long time. Okay. Thank you. How about the, um, so you have these, we just looked at those, those graphs, but so let's just say that 335,000 comes in, that will diminish the 2.893 million that you're asking for at town meeting. Where's the rest of the money going to come from? In terms of a funding source? Correct. So 
we're, for planning discussions, we've been talking about a request in the order of magnitude of $3 million since uh, probably the past two or three weeks for planning discussions. We have a more refined number here this evening that we will continue to refine between now and town meeting for an exact dollar amount. Um, in terms of the funding source at the town meeting, we anticipate requesting funding from the proceeds of the sale of town-owned land, specifically the so-called Polte property, over at the former J.T. Berry um, property. And, and at the moment, I think that we're, we're looking at a recommendation to essentially um, not borrow but appropriate a cash from that account to the amount needed. Um, we're hopeful we'll have an answer on that grant um, application before the town meeting. If we don't, the strategy we, we, we would recommend would be a motion that would call for us to reduce um, the, uh, the expenditure by whatever amount we receive after the town meeting. So we'd be asking for the full amount, but stating in a motion we're going to reduce that expenditure by any grant funds that come from the state. And, uh, getting back to that funding slide with all the different phases, you have a $115 million tag to this in a very short completion timeline. We have to talk about the expectation of where that amount is going to come from, especially if we're asking people to now devote $3 million to that. Where's the rest of it going to come from? Madam Chair, I threw you to the DPW director. Could you go back a slide to the financing slide that's there? So none of this is final. All of this is information that we're working through based upon the best available information that we have. Um, I, I think that the concept that we've been discussing is first and foremost kind of dividing the phases of the project. And you see that that's been done on the slide here where you have the in-town wastewater collection system. So that is basically gravity pipes in the streets that are flowing to pump stations. And then the wastewater is taken out of town through the components that are enlisted in line two, the wastewater conveyance system, to the Greater Lawrence Sanitary District. And you see on the far right, there's significant differences in the cost, right? It's about $32 million for the in-town work. And I think at the moment, what we're, we're looking at is the feasibility of that being potentially funded by, by a betterment and how that might look in terms of the impact on the individual abutting property owners. The wastewater conveyance system, the concept that we've been discussing in the planning discussion is uh, where that may be funded through available funds, particularly the balance of the so-called Volte funding. Um, any potential federal stimulus, economic recovery, coronavirus recovery funding that might be out there, and I'm not just talking about the anticipated $4.7 million that the, the, the town anticipates getting, but any other funding sources that might be out there. Federal infrastructure. Though. Federal inf infrastructure funding as well. So we know that those avenues are there, and, and we, are, we, are, we have been pursuing them and are going to be increasing our pursuit of them as those funds become authorized to try to defray whatever the costs might be remaining um, here for, uh, for the community um, as a whole. Uh, I'm going to stop there. We really are, are, we need to better understand some components of the, the revenue side of it in terms of the property valuation and the tax revenue that gets raised and how that might offset this. That's part of why we need to, and we're looking to update that FXM study. In that, and I know Mr. Parisi didn't mention it, there's a whole other component of the phasing of the expenditure and the revenue stream that comes in with, with it as the property is developed as well that we'll need to evaluate with uh, some outside assistance as well. That's included in the numbers that we're carrying right now at that roughly $3 million. Um, so we, we recognize we don't have all of these answers here, and we certainly are not purporting to have those answers. But we, we've reached a stage where now that to advance this, and because of the timing with MassDOT, the consultants are advising that this is the decision structure that we fall here. So um, that's sort of the short answer, I think, to that question, and I'm happy to answer any follow-up questions. Okay. Let's get to Mr. Percy. Do you have any other thing you want to add? Because we'll probably have questions after you are. Sure. Um, no, I, you know, just finishing up, you know, the last slide. So, okay. so certainly, you know, as we discussed, uh, you know, the final design of construction would uh, come uh, at the next fall town meeting in 2022. Um, you know, we <clears throat> do um, want to look for and hope to get some federal infrastructure funding. Uh, perhaps as early as 2022, 
And again, uh, the other component of the Massachusetts One Stop Construction Funding, um, you know, you know, certainly um, hopeful that that will come as well um, after the design permitting application is approved. So, you have any sense of how much that might um, might be available for that? I, I don't know, but it would be obviously significantly more because it's for the construction component of the, of the project, so I would hope so. Uh, but I, I don't know what limits they have on that type of funding at the moment. All right, let's take some questions, okay? Um, do Mrs. Gonzalez, any questions? Comment? Can we go back maybe two slides? Oh, right here. Can you clarify on the land acquisition, assuming five lots? Can you just clarify that? Can I clarify the land acquisition? Yeah, explain that. What that means. Yeah. I mean, basically, we need to um, be able to site some um, sewer pump stations along Main Street and perhaps uh, Park Street or, Con or Concord. Uh, and they will convey the flows, you know, to um, the, uh, through the force mains to the uh, GLSD. So that would be, you know, constructing pump stations on land that would most likely be um, private, if not already something that the town owns. Anything just to else? help, just to help oh, clarify sorry, again, you know, once we do the study and do the borings, and again, looking at topography, you know, where do we need to locate these pumping stations? We'll determine whether or not we have to acquire land or we already okay, have because it. Because we don't know that yet. We don't know that okay. yet. So we don't know the exact locations as of right. yet. Okay. So we've just put a number in there. We know that we need five parcels somewhere. And, and again, and and it's not like, you know, you don't need an acre lot, but... Uh, right. We could get lucky and it could be... Right. Well. Right. right. So or that, that, that certainly work. is yeah. a big unknown. So yeah. the okay. design or preliminary design process should help us determine where they best located. And we certainly have to see, you know, what's available and, and what designs could fit that as well. Um, so there's a little bit of work still to uh, understand what that looks like. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anything else, Mrs. Gonzalez? No, thanks. Mr. Strudel, we'll save you to the end, because you and Mr. O'Leary have been working on this. Okay. Mr. Walmer, any questions? Yeah, um, just, I guess, some observations. The FXM study, FM, FXM, yeah. I remember reading that, and the ROI was horrible, of what I read compared to the cost. I remember the cost being about $40 million and the ROI was it would take you 30, 40 years to get your money back just to break even. So I'm hoping when we look for that person to do that study that we take a critical look at what that study was previously because I don't even believe the numbers that I saw in that, in that uh, document. I thought it was actually too critical compared to what I expected to see happen and probably what most people see to expect happen. Um, on the, uh, um, on the, uh, uh, the uh, timeline, Going back to Mr. Kelleher's point way back at the beginning here, um, if, if, and the people on the committee know this, and so I just have to trust what you say, if you're saying we can't delay the $3 million funding to take seven, eight months because it's going to block us from working with the DOT, then, I, I work, then we need to go for the three million, right? But, um, but if the ROI comes out anything like the way the previous one was, it would be in, it would be almost a showstopper because it didn't seem like it was good results from way back then. So I'm concerned about that, but I'm also hypersensitive to the fact that as MassDOT has opened up their doors for us to be able to operate them, that we hit their timeline. So I believe at the end of the day, it will be a good a good thing. For us. So those are just I'm just expressing my concerns. Um, and I know it's hard to predict the future. I recall the chair of the CPC has always told me. There's plenty of funding out there, so long distance funding is not an issue. I hope that's really the case because the number is a big number no matter what. Um, and we hope we get that cost way down there. But those are just my concerns off the top of my head. And I think the work you've done, I appreciate everybody's doing the work they've done. So I don't want to let that go by. This is great progress. Um, and I hope it goes smooth and well. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Mr. O'Leary, anything else you want to you, add? Just in relation to the uh, return on investment. Study. I mean, obviously, that's important. It's an important component to see, you know, how we're going to finance and what's the return on it to the community as a whole. Um, but also, another aspect of this is the public health aspect associated with 
putting sewerage and getting rid of septic systems. And then our ability later on, down, <coughs> the, line, down the line, be able to go and talk about sewering Martin's Pond area and a couple other smaller sections of town that have problems with septic systems in the, in, in the community, that section of the community. So there's a public health aspect of this too, which uh, if we can dovetail all of this and make it work and make it uh, somewhat affordable so that the general public will uh, buy into the program, that, that shouldn't be lost. So that the, uh, the timeline, I mean, to, to us right now, again, I, I got on the board a long time ago, 1988, <coughs> we were talking about sewage on Conquer Street. We're still talking about it. Um, but this is truly probably the, the best single opportunity that I have seen in my 33 years um, for us to <coughs> take a good hard look at the numbers and the opportunity that's being put forth with the Mass DOT and our ability to get to create a lot of sewer. So uh, to me, you know, we have funding available from the state <coughs> of town, specifically the Pulte property that uh, collectively, you know, all of us uh, since that transaction took place have been kept in mind, you know, we want to make sure that the money is well spent for an investment in the community looking forward. And this certainly is a project and an opportunity that needs to be investigated and again, an investment made $3 million to get us the answers that we need. So. Thanks, Mr. Mr. Um, so, ROI definitely important. I agree. Um, and that's all I do all day based on what I do for my profession. However, here as well, you have to look at the fact that it's just, not just for the public safety, but to make North Reading like what the vision we want of North Reading, okay? And what I mean by that is that I, I said it at a work group meeting we had about this, but right now our section of Main Street looks like the Linway without the dealerships, the car dealerships. It's an eyesore. You go to any other surrounding community, they're beautiful. Like when Ms. Manipelli said, I can take pictures of Andover and Reading Center, and then if you told me that North Reading, based on you know what our community has become, especially with you know what property values have done and everyone who's moved in, it's like. So I think it, it's something where the vision has to be presented that as a population, yes, this may take 20, 30 years if if it's like the last study for the ROI, but what do you want North Reading to? look like? What do you want for a Main Street? What do you want for, you know, anything that you can put because of it? And I think that's an important piece to, that is, you know, if we just look at it from our ROI perspective, I can tell you a lot of things in life won't happen. No one's going to buy luxury cars. I can name you every single appliance besides Kenmore that you shouldn't buy. And I can go on and on. I could be here for four hours and tell you that if you just look at ROI, a lot of the nicer things in life don't happen. So, and again, I'm not saying ignore it, but it's something where I think that we should present this that because of the opportunity, yes, it may take time, but if the worst case scenario is that we break even and get a better Main Street, that alone makes sense to me. If that's the worst case scenario that, hey, it might take 20 years, but if we can do it at historically low lending rates plus historic uh, stimulus at the federal level and we haven't even gotten into what we could do at the state I just again want to say that when you consider all those things at this point in time in 2021 ROI is nowhere near as important as it was 10 years ago and that's just a bottom line and anyone that like to argue that with me I got all time tomorrow Thank you. I have two questions to just to follow up um, and I, I also think you know that I have, well, let me just ask these questions. Do it looks like a lot of that pathway goes along residences as well, particularly the Park Street, Concord Street. Would those individual residences have the ability to tie into sewer? That is correct. They would have the opportunity to tie in as well. All right, so it's going to not just affect commercial, which we have the expectation of, but also also residential. There'll be benefits to the residential properties along the route as well. The second question really is, and I know the Finance Committee um, Chair and Vice are here, but are we going to get the Finance Director's authorization to use the J.T. Perry 
<laughs> she has to say yes to this too. So I know they have to discuss and take a vote on it or make a decision on it. But have have just I mean I'm sure she's been involved in this too. So, the, Madam Chair, through you, the, I think the question is: Is this use of the proceeds from the sale of town-owned land a lawful use? And I've asked her to look at that, and, and uh, our understanding is that the answer is yes. And, and the reason is because this is something that you could otherwise borrow for, for a five-year term, and that's sort of the big <coughs> trigger for qualifying for the use of these funds. So um, I, I believe, it, you know, our, our understanding is, um, and we've seen it in multiple areas at this point, this is a lawful use of the proceeds from the sale of the very property or any other town-owned land um, that's not restricted. Well, this uh, has her hand up. I'm sorry? Liz has her hand. Oh, and Liz is there. Oh. Yeah, her hand's up. Is she? Okay. So Liz Bynes is there. I cannot there. see that far. I admitted her. I should have known she was there. I <laughs> certainly can allow her to uh, speak. Liz, go ahead. And you're on. Through you, Madam Chair, this is Elizabeth Rourke, the Finance Director. Um, I um, agree with everything that uh, the Town Administrator just mentioned in regards to the use of sale of town-owned land uh, from funds from the Pulsey property. Um, and uh, it can be used for the payment of debt service that we borrowed anything with a life of five years or longer. It can be used for an item that has a lifespan of five years or longer. So they really um, listed the restrictions of the use of sale of town-owned land uh, with the municipal modernization bills that took place uh, quite a few years back. So um, it's basically up to the consensus of you know the select board and the finance committee and the town administrator. If that is your wish to use those funds for this purpose, then they are available and able to be used. Thank you, Ms. Roar. I just had a, just a comment to kind of follow up with Ms. Testudo because I think, I think we can, you know, do the ROI. And I, I think it's kind of a given ever since we've, ever since I've been here, which hasn't been as long as Mr. O'Leary, but I, we've heard that, you know, if we usher in this, if we usher in sewer down along that those corridors, those those main corridors, that you know, if if we if we if we build it, they will they will come and you know, and I think that that's kind of obvious in terms of an economic development standpoint. Where I have a lot of pause is a discussion of a betterment, and I think with this timeline, we need to be laser focused on any available funding and at this moment in time there's a lot of infrastructure funding available for this specific type of project so we kind of need to be banging down the door of our, our representatives to get us chunks of that money to offset the massive cost of this it's available and it's it's available right now at this moment in time so including what Mass DOT is doing, and I think it's a great idea that piggybacking on it might reduce the cost. We have to go for whatever is available, and right now, it's kind of a gift that 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 a gift that we just went through that horrible time frame because now there's money to be had for for this project. So I think, given the time frame, I don't know who or how or who's on top of those, you know accessing those funds but that should be kind of laser focus on that and, and not a little bit 335,000 is nice but we need you know 115 million that's what we need so we need a big chunk of it all right we need to go to other questions that's what I was about this comments yeah. for the CPC's opinion does anyone else have any questions or comments <coughs> just a comment. Um, I think that you're going to find that the return on investment uh, study will come out a whole lot better than it did in the past. When that last one was done, I don't think anybody believed that sewer was ever going to come. So I think that the questions that were asked in the community at the time, the negative or no response answers, um, as opposed to what we're looking at right now, where <coughs> the group in this room has done a tremendous job getting us this far and getting us ready to, uh, to, to uh, actually take advantage of this situation. And I think when people believe it's going to happen, 
they'll be much more willing to make advancements or to improve their businesses or to bring new visitors in. So I think that will come out better than you think this time. Good point. All right. Any other questions? Comment? Anybody joining us virtually? Okay, so I think obviously the recommendation is to vote to recommend. I'm assuming, Mr. Governor. <laughs> I, I'm prepared to, to ask the yes. board to vote to recommend. Okay. It's the board's okay. pleasure. I, I will note that, as I said, we are refining the ask. <coughs> We've been talking about for the past couple of weeks an order of magnitude of $3 million. You saw largely the breakdown of that number on there. Um, I think we just we've gotten in the past 24 hours some good feedback from the Planning Commission regarding the financial component of it and we can probably further refine that as well in some conversation with them but um, I think I mean I, I would I would I'll defer to the two select board members but I think we're prepared to recommend that the board consider a vote to recommend let me ask you two questions before we take the motions for article 10 is to approve in this presentation <coughs> was for 10 and 11 appropriate the money for the design and planning and then appropriate the money for the cons wastewater construction right mr gilberto that's correct yes and although we are refining the figures for article 10 do you anticipate a range for an ask and for article 11 a range for an ask is it is that two two point eight nine three for both of those and how do you how do you divide that up for each article through you madam chair that request would be solely for article 10 Article 11, we put on the list of warrant articles to safeguard against any surprises in the timeline in our conversations with MassDOT. Um, with regard to that, um, there, there have been no surprises, and I think, if anything, we've got a little, a little more time than we thought we might have when this first came up in July, um, which is always good for planning purposes. I think the, the select board's intention in putting it on there was to let folks know, hey, that this could be a possibility, and certainly to alert folks that We've really accelerated the timeline in the past couple of um, months for this project. I'll leave it to the board in terms of what its intention is with this particular article. I know it caused some confusion in our last conversation. Yes. Um, and I'll defer to Mr. Studo and Mr. O'Leary as to what their thoughts are for that. Okay. Mr. Yeah, I think we can pull it off. <laughs> we don't have a need for it. Okay. So there's no need for it to be on, on the water. So pass over. All right. Actually, I'll pull it. You can pull it. I mean, if there's no, we don't see the urgency for the funding, and I, I think that there's, there's a lot of very good questions that come up just for mm -hmm. discussing Article 10. I wouldn't want to confuse the issues, and so I, I would, if that's the recommendation, I'd respectfully suggest a, a vote of the board to remove Article 11 from the warrant. I agree. That would be our recommendation to the board. Okay. Do I have a motion? Article 10. 10. Me to do 10 for, uh, Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 10 appropriate money for wastewater planning, design, engineering. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Mr. Walmart. Yes. Um, at the town meeting, we'll, I, I assume we'll be hearing from recommendations from the CPC. We'll be hearing recommendations from the Finance Committee. Um, you know, it'd be good if we're all in sync at the same time. So if we were to delay our recommendation, I assume you haven't decided how you, you will go at the town meeting, so it'd be great if we could understand what you're planning to do in regard to this. Will you be supporting this as well? Sorry, I can't, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. We are waiting for tonight's presentation because we do not have the information necessary to have any sort of a lengthy discussion about it. Um, the town administrator did attend the last uh, uh, finance committee meeting and gave us an overview of it. Uh, we do have another finance committee meeting scheduled if necessary for the 20th. Our original hope was to have our notes on as many articles as possible ready for the work. Clearly, that's not happening. Uh, so I can't really tell you um, how the finance committee will vote on this. Um, I certainly uh, recommend that everybody uh, tune in this evening if they were available, um, and we will further discuss it on the 20th. Okay. Uh, but you know, in addition to that, we also have financial planning team, one of four possible dates this week or next. Correct. To be determined. So it will also be discussed uh, heavy duty, I'm sure. 
So there's a lot of discussion going on around it, and I don't see any reason for the board to like to the delay their vote pending the outcome of further discussions with other entities. Well, we do have we have we have a motion anyway on the floor. Right? I, we we are the motion isn't to delay. The motion is to rec is to recommend. So. Mr. Pierce had his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Yes. Pierce. Yes. Um, <coughs> Since we've been involved since the beginning, we realize the importance of it and the plan to go unanimously recommend Thank you. Okay, right. so Thank motion. You. Any other further discussion? All right, I have a motion by Mr. Stewart. The motion is to recommend and anyway, not to delay. Motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous? Aye. Aye. And a motion on Article 11. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to remove Article 11 from the warrant. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? On this regard, I will say I disagree. I think it should be there, and I think we should just pass it over because I know it's important to keep this like we do on other articles. We have it to people's attention that at some point it could come down the line and we would just be passing it over. But I don't want to not, I, I, I want to, I just want to raise that point because I think, I think it's important. It's hopefully going to be voted on in the future, so. But All right. But then again, that's fine too. I mean, if you just want to leave it on there and to make a recommendation to pass over a town meeting tonight, we can do that too. We can't because the motion was. I know. He, we, I can withdraw <laughs> my second, he can withdraw his motion. But and you want to vote on this and then we can do another one if it fails? Well, well, we can withdraw the most. Oh, okay. okay. However, I mean. Well, let's look at, get a consensus, Madam right. Chair, before we vote. I understand. This we do. Is it consensus to pass over it, or is it consensus to withdraw this from the article? I'd rather withdraw it. That's okay. me. Okay. And Mr. O'Leary, you'd rather withdraw it? Yeah, I, again, I'm fine with passing over it also. Yeah. It, 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 okay. it, Mr. One of the reasons we put it on there was to highlight the yeah. importance and the timing of the issue. Yeah. So. Okay. Mr. Wallner, are you, what, what's your... Um, I'd probably take it off. Take it off. Mrs. Gonzalez. I'm with you on a Passover. All right. Can I give my opinion of why? Absolutely. Because That's what we're talking about. If we pass it over, just because maybe I don't know the mechanics of it, can the public have a question of why we're passing it over? Because the problem is that I don't want to get into a two-hour discussion again that we can't we can't okay. answer these questions. So, yeah. meaning, if that happens, then I just I don't want to, okay. you know, yeah. again confuse the thing where then people think we're withholding information. That's my fear. Okay, that makes sense. Or or take a vote on it and say no to it. That's another op possibility at the town meeting. So, all right. All right, motion on the floor. You've convinced me. Motion by Mr. Studo to withdraw. Seconded by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Um, and our next art is, are you all set with your, thank you for. <laughs> Men and Mike and Kevin, we appreciate you. Sitting. We appreciate your input. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate it. You did so well. Know. We didn't have yeah. to. Jump. Hopefully, no. you'll, you'll. That's good that you didn't feel. There are a lot to say behind the scenes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you. All right. Article 12, Mr. Gilberto, appropriate money for legal expenses, secondary school building litigation. Madam Chair, through you, this uh, is an article to uh, preserve. Um, our ability to request funding for the um, ongoing litigation relative to the secondary school building project. Um, at this time, my recommendation to the board would be to vote to recommend at town meeting Article 12. Okay. I have a motion. Madam Chair, I move to recommend the town meeting Article 12 appropriate money for legal expenses secondary school building litigation. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Article 13, appropriate money for legal expenses, 20 Elm Street. Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, through you, very similar to the secondary school building litigation. We have ongoing litigation concerning 20 Elm Street. Um, for those who might not be aware, we have been given a hearing date 
um, for that ongoing litigation of uh, December, uh, end of December of this year, December, I think, 21st, 22nd, and 23rd are the three dates that I've seen. Um, so we're leaving that on there in the event that we need fi uh, fi financing in place to continue that effort. Uh, I think we feel we're in a really good position and we are, are unlikely to need additional funding, but I would uh, nonetheless ask the board to leave it on the warrant and to, at this time, vote to recommend the article of town meeting. Do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to recommend the town meeting, Article 13, appropriate money for legal expenses, 20 Elm Street litigation. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Article 15, authorized, oh, excuse me. 14. 14. Authorize the conveyance of town-owned land for affordable housing at 57 Haverhill Street. Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, um, the town planner is here this evening, and I would respectfully ask your indulgence to consider Articles 14, 15, and 16 together for purposes of at least the presentation. Um, the Planning Commission, I think, has a pretty consolidated strategy with regard to them. Right. Danielle, you emailed me the presentation. I, I'm. I'm not able to access it to get it up on the screen on this computer, so I have to do it on that computer. I have it. <laughs> I'd like to get it up on the screen if we if we can. If you just give, if oh, folks could sure. could indulge me, um, maybe you could just give the background as to where it came from, yes. and then I'll so hopefully be ready. Oh, I need it. Oh, I'm just going to have to show it. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So um, there are um, 23 properties in the Affordable Housing Overlay District, which was uh, created in 2008. This is um, a, a, a set of properties that are scattered throughout the town, um, throughout residential neighborhoods. The town um, put a zoning overlay on these par parcels in order to enable for affordable housing development on them. Um, without that, um, in some cases, they wouldn't be developable as uh, single-family houses even because they don't meet the regular zoning for their underlying districts. In other cases, um, they would meet the zoning for the underlying district, except that um, the zoning actually allows more. So the affordable housing overlay district allows between, um, you know, it, it allows a, a number of housing types. It, it, uh, it allows single-family, two-family, and then multifamily up to eight units. Um, per structure. So these were zoned um, to enable this type of housing development, um, but the, the town hasn't done anything with them yet, and the town owns all of these properties. And earlier, um, in, well, I should say in the spring, um, I, we were approached by Habitat for Humanity. Um, and I don't want to focus too much on them because um, any conveyance would be subject to, you know, there would be an RFP process and it's not a foregone conclusion that they would be the ones to get it. But they approached us and that was the um, purpose of our uh, working with them, uh, or that was the purpose of our bringing it um, forward at this time. Um, this was also something that we had been working with our, for, with our, I'm sorry, do you want me to no, no, be less detailed no. about it? Because I didn't no, know if that, no, this no, is more no, of the presentation. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. No, um, this is great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll so I'll ask you questions when you do. Oh, sure, sure. So just, just by way of background, this is why this is coming up now. Um, in addition to that, um, our housing services office ha and, and, and I had been working together, and this has come up before over the, over the years that, um, an organization such as Habitat that is structured in this way um, is really well suited to develop properties like this um, because they are a developer that can provide um, small, you know, the kind of modest development that we would be targeting for the neighborhoods and not these huge projects that, you know, are really out of whack with the neighborhood. Um, so um, we after some discussion, um, it was uh, decided that there are three sites that, that could potentially be of interest, and um, 44 and 46 Oakdale would be taken together um, because they are small properties. They would you know, be consolidated. Uh, 57 Haverhill Street and um, the, uh, um, sorry, 7 St. Teresa Street were, were looked at. And um, so I guess I, I can go over what the, um, I don't know if you want me to. I can uh, drive it if you'd like. Oh, yeah. I, no. I, I, uh, is is it okay for me to move? Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, do you have I just, pictures of the lot? Yeah, yeah. you want to call up for us? Sure. And, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And I know that all of the articles say that they would be allowed to be um, sold on such terms and conditions as the select board deems appropriate. Our, right. our million dollar question for you is, 
by the, the conveyance for affordable housing, it actually doesn't impact the GLAM calculation. It would actually add to our percentage, if, if, and then we would permanently restrict these for that, that, that would be permanently restricted to affordable housing, right? That's, that is my understanding. Any units created, we would want to be uh, affordable in perpetuity, so we, they would have to be eligible for our inventory, and we would require that they never come off. Um, in terms of um, you know the GLAM calculation, we did some preliminary work, and it, it didn't appear to impact it because we are adding right. area. Um, in some ways, we're subtracting area, but the way the proportions work out, we, it does not look like it would have a negative impact. Well, this would way. become affordable um, housing right, in exactly. the community. Yes, exactly. Um, and so this is, uh, the first site is 7 St. Teresa Street. It's, um, I just put the size, it's fi uh, 53,000 uh, square feet, um, has 160 uh, feet of frontage. The, the zoning requirements are different because of the overlay, um, and I can give an overview of what the zoning does require. Um, but this is a site that, um, at least initially, um, Habitat had given us some feedback that one or two single family homes would be um, a really great target project uh, for them to do. Um, and you have this kind of transition area between you have the apartment building in front, you also have single family homes on that block, and then, um, you know, it, it, then there's, you know, undeveloped land in the back, um, and then you kind of transition forward to the commercial. So St. Teresa Street kind of has a mix of everything. Where is, um, I'm yeah, sorry. I'm oh, it's off of Main Street. It's like between Main Street and the town hall. It's, um, uh, it's, I think it's the block after Sullivan. Heading north just before Stop and Shop on the left hand side, opposite side of the street. Where, um, no, Abbott Shoes. Yeah, yeah, just before Abbott Shoe, oh. before Abbott Shoe, behind Abbott All right. In like my fun. head, it's over by St. Teresa. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, like trying to figure that out. Because you know, St. Teresa's used to be there. Oh, oh. really? Mm -hmm. So is there an, a road at, to access that? Where's the road? So the road goes in. Um, you know what Hearth works? You know what yeah. Hearth works is? Yeah. That's, 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 yeah, that's a street. Okay. <coughs> so there's Abbott and there's. Oh, Hathworks, that one right? on the other side. Is that okay. right? No, my goodness. Yeah. No, I got that one. No, that's the apartment that's building. The apartment that's building. the apartments. Then, then, Abbott, 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 then the next building. Then, 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 then the next building. Is, is that the colonnade yes. building? Where, yeah. where's the, where was the church? Just the, This doesn't relate, but where was you, the You know where the Hearth Works building is? Where the KSC used to be? Or the KSC? The church was oh, there. Oh, that's the apartment oh, building. The church okay. was there. All right. The church was right on the corner. All right. St. Oh. Teresa Street is, what is the name of the street that goes in there? There's Sullivan. Um, yeah. Sullivan and St. Joseph's office. Right here. Nablus. Right, but Sullivan did. Okay, I was just curious about that. Yeah. Right here is where right the church is. Okay. You're a welcome knowledge. I was baptized there. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to review the next site? Yes. Um, please. Okay, so 44 and 46 Oakdale, um, this is a street of uh, all single family homes. Um, this is a 17,000 um, plus a 3,500 3, square foot site. It's about 20,000 square feet total. Um, again, I think one, potentially two single family homes would be the target project for this. Um, at least, uh, you know, in discussion with Habitat, um, they had made it known that while some of these properties might yield more in terms of what the zoning allows, um, they would rather have one house than no houses. So if a project got to a size that the neighborhood was uncomfortable with or that the town was uncomfortable with, they would be happy to scale that back. So, um, you know, this is a discussion that I brought up a little bit with the CPC at their meeting last night. It's really hard to, um, the zoning isn't as obvious as, you know, for a, an RA district, I could tell you, you, you can only build a single family house and it has to be this size. For this zoning district, the zoning is a little bit more flexible because you can go up to these eight unit housing um, developments, but um, there's a 50% open space requirement and there's a height limit of two and a half stories or 35 feet, which is basically the, the size of a, you know, the, the height of a, of a typical new colonial. Um, it's the same height limit as we have for the, um, other residential districts for single-family homes. So we're not talking massive projects here. We are potentially talking a slightly higher density than these neighborhoods normally have. 
Um, so that would be Oakdale Road if you want to go through the next one. Um, 57 Haverhill Street, this is by far the biggest of the sites that we're looking at. Um, this has some wetlands on it, um, and um, we would anticipate that would have to obviously be part of the permitting. Um, this, the, the motion and the warrant article were, were written a little bit differently for this one because there's a history with RMLD. This was a subject of a land swap, and we didn't acquire the property in quite the same way. So this one is a majority vote, where the others are two-thirds votes, um, and um, just has a little bit of a different history to it. Um, so these are the three sites. Um, I did want to mention too that in order to give the neighborhood sort of an overview of what we're looking at and to provide some information and answer the questions that we can, um, the CPC has a, a, a virtual meeting scheduled for uh, Thursday the, the 16th um, at seven o'clock um, and we've sent a notice to the abutters to all of these properties so that they can have an opportunity to ask questions and dial in and you know contact us. and. Um, um, and we'll answer their questions as, as best we can. Um, this is a situation where, um, in contrast to the Carpenter Drive property, for example, where we're doing a lot of studying of that property and coming up with possible concept designs and possibilities, um, and intending to do an RFP prior to a town meeting vote, um, we're doing this in the reverse order, and the reason for that is because the zoning has been in place for these properties for some time, so we do know what kinds of projects can go here. Um, you know, rezoning is not in question right now. Um, so I think our ask and our recommendation would be for, um, you know, for town meeting to authorize, um, you know, us to be able to convey these properties um, for, not, not to sell, but, but to convey, at least that's, that's our recommendation that we do it this way. Um, in order to see this, um, you know, modest scale affordable housing development, um, we liked some of the parameters that, at least in speaking with Habitat, that they had shared with us, um, which included they do 60% area median income, so it's a greater level of subsidy and it's a greater affordability than um, what we typically see. Most of the rest of the units in town are um, affordable to people earning 80% of the area median income, and we often hear the comment that, oh, well, that's not really affordable. So we would target a greater level of affordability for this, um, and that could be um, a preference that's made known in our RFP as we're looking to evaluate. Um, and um, we would want for 100% of these to be affordable so that we're not in the position of, um, you know, we've got this land to devote to it, but, you know, we're losing some of it to, to the market units. We're, we're really keeping pace with trying to get ahead of our affordability percentage and making progress in that. So. so can you just, is that all set? Let me just go, do, do we have any questions? I just have a quick question. As far as your notification to abutters, Yes. Was that 300 feet? We did a 300 foot abutter. Okay, because on one of them I'm not sure if I was, oh. it would be close enough or not. Uh, um, so I, where I would have to recuse myself, so I didn't get a notification. So. Which one are you using? What's that? Which one are you using? Oakdale Road Extension. Oakdale Road. Again, I'm on meat. I don't know if we're within the 300 feet or not. I will check. Um, the letters went out on. I think Thursday. So we're only starting to hear from people, so it's possible it hasn't arrived yet. But I will check. Uh, I haven't heard from any of my neighbors yet either, which okay. I'm surprised. So, okay, so, so, so on that one there, I'll, I'll probably abstain just because out of an abundance of caution because I don't know. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Again, as far as the, the, the one on, uh, on Haverhill Street, as was alluded to, that was uh, acquired by the town through a land swap with running units from the light department. Reading is the light owned that particular site. They also purchased a house uh, right in the corner, just up from Scotland Road, and we did a land swap with them. Where they are currently now behind yeah. the DPW, yeah. put in the uh, yeah. big Bad station there. Station. We swapped the house on the, this piece of property and the house on Haverhill Street, even, mm -hmm. and gave them that to get it off of Haverhill Street uh, from a visual standpoint. And then we sold a single-family home. At auction and retain this parcel. Yes. Any okay. other question? No, no other questions. Mr. Waller, any questions? I guess I'm just uh, thinking back to what Danielle said earlier, which was when you know on Chestnut Street, when we own the property, it becomes difficult with the neighbors. I'm just wondering what the response to neighbors are is, is going to be on the 16th, and if we could hear about that before we take a motion, mm -hmm. I would like to 
I, I think it's a great. I think it's yeah. a great initiative. I don't have any problem with the initiative, but I would like to hear back what the neighbors have to say about that. I have the same thought process. Yeah. Okay. Any other Just comments or questions? No. I have the, I'm, a, I'm opposed to conveying or even selling our chunks of land like this. I know it's a good cause. We're not even getting paid for it. You know, we're all going to be putting, giving it to someone basically. And I, I love the program and that sort of thing. I know we're, you know, we are sort of, but we really should should retain our open spaces. And I, that's my personal thought here is you look, looking at that teeny little, you had to add another one because it's that teeny little old deal that's really throwing a house there is a teeny little lot. We don't even know if it's We don't even know if it's actually buildable because I know that particular lot is it's a lot of ledge. Yeah. I don't know if you could even put a septic system. I mean, in there's there, something to be said for keeping the open space and the trees and the nice areas in between homes and space for people to, to breathe and walk their dog and maybe plant a garden. So again, the happy tree hugger here. I, I'm not in. I'm not in, in favor of this, and I'm not. I don't mean to be offensive by it. I love the cause of affordable housing, but I, I'm just not in, in favor of us divesting of our open spaces for that purpose. But we're gonna take a vote to hold off until you, we hear more from. I'm not. Yeah. Are we just going to wait on this, Mr. Gilberto, or what should we do? Is just wait and make the first meeting? It's the meeting. board's pleasure. You, you will have the benefit of feedback from the neighborhood meeting next Thursday oh, yes, okay. at your warrant article hearing on okay. September 20th. Yeah. Okay. okay. So just all three recommend the town meeting for now? You could do that. Just to or do you want us to, you want this to be, you, you want us to take a vote on it? I, I, it's the board's pleasure, really. I mean, it's the board's not the sponsor of it. You have obviously have it on the warrant. The planning commission is the sponsor. Of it. I defer to the board. I, I, I would just like to make a comment that I'm not in sync with you when it comes to this. In other words, we have a we have a responsibility for affordable housing to meet some affordable housing needs, and we haven't done enough. And we have opportunities such as this where we have some small parcels. Uh, which are not necessarily going to be encroaching on a neighborhood with a modest uh, single-family home throw, you know, thrown into the neighborhood, which, which would normally be on a buildable lot anyway. I think we should uh, strongly look at the, the possibility of doing so. I think it's laudable. I think it's a good idea. I think it's something that needs to be considered. So respectfully uh, disagree. I'm not going to hold on to everything just because we have it right now. Mr. I think if the... If there's not some serious issues with the neighbors, um, I'm inclined also to support for the affordable housing aspect of it. You know, just again, and, you know, I tie things in again to town holistically, and it just I, I think it will help in other areas as small as it is. But um, you know, again, uh, I've learned though that let the people speak first. So I do agree though that I'd have to hear that before, you know, making a, a decision. So I just don't know what that means regarding the articles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to do a drive-by look at the properties because yeah. I don't know what the yeah. properties look like. So I'd be interested to yeah. know what it might look like if yeah. something was there. Oh, yes. Yeah. Over, over the years, if you look back, we've, uh, this town has managed to hold on to some fairly large parcels for that very reason that you said the open space is moving. And I think uh, if you added all these parcels together, it would be as big as even one of the pieces that we saved. So I, I think it's a worthwhile uh, gift to the people who need it to do some totally high Any other comments or good? All right, so do we have a motion? How, how are we to recommend the town meeting? Mike, is that Mr. Gilberto? Yes. Okay. Uh, so there's three. Madam Chair, I move to recommend the town meeting, Article 14, authorized conveyance of town-owned land for affordable housing, 57 Haverhill Street. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any <coughs> further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, I move to recommend the town meeting, Article 15, authorized conveyance of town-owned land for affordable housing, 44 to 46 Oakdale Road. I second. 
Bob Schiffey, Mr. Studo, second by Mr. Walner. Mr. O'Leary is going to recuse. I will be recusing myself until a clarification as to whether my abutting status is determined. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Four in favor, one recused. Madam Chair, I move to recommend the town meeting, Article 16, authorized conveyance of town owned land for affordable housing, 7 St. Teresa Street. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. All, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you for your presentation. Mr. Mr. O'Leary, couldn't we use that as one of our pumping stations on the street? Maybe. Plaza would have to buy with a million dollars. Could very well be. Yeah. Right. Something to think about. Yeah. All right. Actually, make a note of that. The St. Teresa Street, see if we can use it for pumping station. Mm. I don't know if it needs that far north. Oh. Okay. Yeah. You're up, Mr. Gilbert. Article, Article 17. 17, authorize the Northeast Metropolitan Regional Vocational School District construction project. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, through you, um, the board members will see this is an article that has been added to the draft warrant as a result of some good news received by the Northeast Metropolitan Regional Vocational School District. Um, they were awarded last week a uh, substantial Mass School Building Authority grant for their $300 million plus school building um, construction project where, for those who are not aware, they are proposing to build a new regional vocational school building, I believe, behind, uh, I, I won't say that, on the site of the existing building on the same parcel in a different location. Um, so it's great news for the, uh, for the district, and, and I give the district a lot of credit for communicating very openly as to the status of their application and what they were looking at. Um, they did hold a meeting some three years ago, I believe, uh, in person where they met with all the town administrators, town managers, and mayors for the member communities and highlighted what their schedule was. And their schedule was slightly delayed, but not totally delayed um, in terms of this. Um, and now we are at the, the, the time where, uh, as soon as tomorrow, I expect a vote of their school committee to um, notify the member communities of their intent to assess a debt um, payment and, and to borrow for this construction project. And so uh, I had asked, and they were gracious enough to provide us earlier than they were planning to um, today, um, a projected debt schedule, which does uh, include a projected assessment for the town of North Reading. Um, that assessment rises over a few fiscal years until it plateaus at approximately $271,000 annually for our share of the, um, the project. And that is based upon not <coughs> our population as a whole, but our school enrollment at the school um, as of this point in time, with I believe 34 students in the census. So it's a significant amount, um, certainly not an, an, an insignificant impact on our, uh, on our annual budget. Um, I think hi higher than the projections we were looking at back in 2018, and I'm sure that there's a multitude of reasons that I'll learn more about um, as soon as tomorrow morning at the meeting that they've invited us to for it. So in light of all that, uh, and I should note that under state statute, once we are notified formally of their intent to borrow and to assess our share of the debt on the town, we have a 60-day window to object to it. And I'm not here this evening because we are recommending to object. Um, quite the contrary, I think we're all supportive of the project, but we want to just figure out its impact and how we intend to, to to fund for it moving forward. But nonetheless, given the magnitude, I believe it warrants consideration at town meeting in the form of a warrant article. Um, and so we were able to get, and again, I appreciate Northeast working with us to get us this draft, excuse me, this warrant article language that you see before you, um, Article 17, relative to this project. And those of you who were part of the conversation for our own middle high school project, the language is very similar. It refers to the MSBA, to the grant that we expect to receive. And just to give the big numbers, it's a $317 million project um, 
for which uh, roughly 70, almost 77 percent is expected to be uh, reimbursed by um, the MSBA. The town's share of the remaining portion is $4,686,000 in, um, um, excuse me, is uh, $4,686,498 exclusive of interest. So, I mean, it's a significant investment, obviously. So, we don't have all of the answers in, as to funding this at this point. So, my recommendation is to add this article to the warrant, but that the board consider a vote to recommend at town meeting to allow myself, the finance director, to consult with the financial planning team um, at our upcoming meeting just to make sure we're all sort of in agreement as to the strategy on this moving forward. But, you know, a big decision for us, yes. but great news for, for the district and for um, our, the families that send um, or, or will send students to the, the school um, in the coming years. Okay, just a question, Mr. Studo. No, I just want to know when you want to marry him. I, Madam Chair, I should also <laughs> add that I have um, put a request in to ask representatives of Northeast to come to our September 20th meeting, the warrant article hearing. I think they have a lot, you know, I'll learn a lot more tomorrow, um, and I think that they'll be able to convey even further. It's important to note that our representative, Judy Diamond, is, I believe, chair of the uh, building committee, unfortunately for her, because that's going to be, it's already been a big undertaking, and it's, uh, it's going to be a lot more, but good for them for getting the funding. Mm -hmm. For any of you that have, have not been up to the school yet, uh, you should make arrangements to go and take a look at it. It is in significant need of uh, replacement. Not upgrading, not improving it. Yeah. It's in significant need of replacement. Mm -hmm. uh, it served the district well, but it's, uh, it, its time has come and gone. That's a lot over the way. Again, mm -hmm. uh, they were a bit delayed because of COVID and all the other things, but to stay in the course and kudos to the school committee and the administration down there for securing the funding. I had no idea the enrollment was that high. That's a lot of um, students going there. Yeah, and they're looking to, to our, and this yeah. will allow them to increase the enrollment because they have a waiting list down there at the vocational mm -hmm. school, a significant waiting list, and this will help alleviate some of that, that backlog. All right, so do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to recommend that town meeting, Article 17, authorized Northeast Metropolitan Regional Vocational School District Construction Project. Second. That's a motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 To the end. And that is, includes warm <coughs> discussion, I think, right? So let's talk about the next order of business. What do you mean? Let's take that one out. We have, we have a motion to okay. sign the article. Okay, that's after the next order of business. Okay. <laughs> Do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to sign the October 4, 2021 town meeting warrant. Well, Second. Because I'm looking over at the, the town clerk. Who wants to go home with us? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't say a word. Uh, Chair, uh, Mr. O'Leary seconded. Motion by Mr. Studio, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 That is unanimous. All right. There should be two copies for the yeah. board to sign, if you could each sign in. I will delete Article 11 and renumber the remaining articles, so we will have a 16-article warrant for the October 4th town meeting. While the board members are signing, I will just let folks know we have... We intend to post this as a meeting occurring at 189 Park Street, which is the middle high school building and complex. I've been in discussions with the superintendent and we'll be looking at whether we'll be using the gymnasium or the Performing Arts Center or, if necessary, a combination of both so that we can ensure that we're able to spread folks out. And there'll be more information coming on that in the coming weeks. But um, I should also note that you know, we have uh, an understanding with the superintendent that based upon the State Department of Elementary and Secondary Education requirement that visitors to schools wear facial coverings, we expect that all attendees will be required to wear facial coverings with the exception of a medical exemption and a designated separate location, much as we did at the June 2020 town meeting. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. I was sure. So there, because of the requirement uh, and in consideration of the requirement for the, from the State Department of Elementary and Secondary <coughs> Education that visitors to schools wear facial coverings, we expect to require attendees to wear facial coverings with the exception of those who have a medical exemption. We had at the June 2020 meeting a dedicated area for 
unmasked individuals to participate from if they uh, so chose. But we will be encouraging um, and requiring for admission to the main hall for wearing a mask. All right, so our next order of business is to review the town administrator's performance evaluation. And I think there's a very brief slide on this, Mr. Gilberto. Yes. Um, it's only four quick slides. Very. For the 2020 and 2021 periods, we were a little bit delayed on our tasks. We were a little bit busy there with COVID. So I'm pleased to report to you that. So these are for, for 2020 evaluation, 2021. And so we just did a quick breakdown of. There you go. The, there were the metrics are the metrics that for which the board evaluates. Uh, Mr. Gilberto is his relationship with the board, fiscal management, community and public relations, personnel administration, his professional skills and abilities. And we then each independently assign our value to that as well as explain our evaluation. So I'm happy to report that for um, Oh, you're missing a little piece of that. You're missing a little piece of this one. I'm happy to report to you that Mr. Gilberto achieved very high marks from the board in these different metrics. <coughs> he achieved a 42.70 out of 50 in 2020 and a 47 out of 50 in 2021 for relationship with the board for fiscal management. 34.68 out of 40 in 2020, 37.5 in 2021. For his community and public relations, 35.24 out of 40 in 2020, and 38.35 <coughs> out of 40 in 2021. For his personnel administration score, he received a 41.25 out of 50 in 2020, and a 45.60 out of 50 in 2021. And for his professional skills and abilities, 44.5 out of 50 in 2020 and 47.53 out of 51. So for both years, um, Mr. Gilberto achieved an overall rating, which is the next slide, of um, 198.37 in 2020 and 215.98 in 2021, which is a, in the outstanding category. So we want to just say congratulations. <coughs> Mr. Gilberto on achieving an outstanding rating of performance in 2020 and 2021. Now I'll turn it over to the board for comment. Mr. Mr. O'Leary? I'm not surprised. <laughs> well, Michael, you, again, you're a terrific reflection on the board. You make us look good. <coughs> and, uh, as far as your standing in the community, you're well respected. Uh, your opinions count. Uh, people appreciate. Uh, you know, all the effort I know as a member of this board, and the board members know better than anybody how much time you devote and how much time it takes away from your family and your, uh, your we have to force you to take vacation now, which is, uh, you know, uh, but, but again, you know, well-deserved, uh, certainly appreciate all the effort. Uh, the last year, the challenges that have been presented um, because of COVID, I mean, this is a challenge running this community anyway, but when you throw the... Uh, pandemic into it, it, uh, it makes it all that more. Uh, you've done a terrific job of uh, shepherding the, uh, the administration and the employees and uh, providing the services. And again, uh, congratulations and appreciate all that you do. Thank you. Mr. Walner? Um, I'll just say I think your professionalism is really outstanding. Uh, 
to go along with the rating. And I think that your attention to detail <coughs> is exemplary because I can't keep track of all the details you keep track of, even on one topic. I'm amazed at how well you can cough it up at a moment's notice. Again, you make us look very, very good because the information is always the right information at the right time. And it's a tempered response, it's balanced. Um, it's not biased one way or another, and when you do bias, when you start to go one way or another, I really listen very carefully to what you say because I respect what you have to say. Thank you. So um, I think you, I, you know, I don't have any experience before this, but I think you've just done a fantastic job. I'm delighted to work with you, and I know personally I'm always thinking about <coughs> what can I do to support you to make your job better, easier, more manageable. And that's always where I'm coming from because I think you deserve to have a bigger job job than the, the town. Because our town would only benefit from you having even more responsibilities than you do right now. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you, Mike. Mr. Studo. So I'd say that it would take a full term or more to learn everything that a, a select board member has to do. And thanks to Mike willing to listen to me sometimes with my rants, I think he's accelerated that timeline for me to, you know, I, I think I'm in a very good position for the first time doing this, especially since, again, no public sector experience, you know, he's helped me through a lot where, when I think, especially things are not being done fast enough, because again, I come in a world where you can just push the envelope a little faster. Um, and, you know, and I, I, I can say this, seeing how much he does, and seeing how sometimes it can be underappreciated by the general public, I feel like I've become fiercely protective of our TA when I feel like, you know, he's not being shown to do, you know, whether it's for whatever reason. It doesn't happen a lot, but it can happen. So I feel like it, it just, uh, you know, I like to thank you just because I said, like, with COVID, I didn't get to do this. Everything was virtual. and. You know, sometimes I would finish meetings and not know exactly what we just talked about for four hours, and he would be the one that would be willing to put in the time the next day to clarify. So, thank you. Thank you, Richard. Mrs. Johnson, um, being towards the end of this, I will echo so much of my colleagues. Um, just an utmost professional at all times. Um, proud to say that you are RTA. Um, always available, doesn't matter, you know, always get, always gotten back to me in a, such a reasonable amount of time. Um, respect, I think, is the highlighted word there. Um, such respect. And you do make us look good and make our job a little bit easier, so thank you for that. And, and again, through the pandemic, you know, just always, <coughs> on top of everything and dotting your eyes and crossing your teeth all the time. So thank you. Thank you. And I know I'd have to say same, 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 yeah. same. <laughs> Plus this is a point in the meeting where we thank Mrs. Gilberto yeah. and, be, and your kids because you truly are shared with the entire town. And I think I would just say, oh I'm gonna repeat everything. You're the quintessential professional the way that you execute the leadership of the town, the town employees, and the team that you have around you to help lead the town. It's just very humble the way that you execute things and very a lot of grace with the way that you handle things and a lot of humility with the way that you handle things and people. And I really appreciate that leadership style that you have. I think that nothing highlighted that more than COVID. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people realize how much you, your team, and the people in the town, they didn't stop where most people were saying it was taking a long time, they were stuck at home, they were, this team here did not stop tending to everything so that business could be available for people that live here. Information could be available for people that live here. <coughs> I just think, Thank you, thank your family, because of, uh, it's, it's a round-the-clock job for you. It isn't a, a punch-in and punch-out job for you. And I think that was kind of highlighted for us during COVID. And what everyone says is you're always a, available <laughs> and accessible. And I'm sure that, that 
you probably get into a little trouble for that. You have to because of <laughs> the, the being available all the time. But we're so appreciative of that that effort that you that you make on behalf of the town. And I also like how you always present to us the position of the <coughs> worker, the municipal workers here, because I think that that's something that we don't see day in and day out, and that you have to reflect that to us so we have a better understanding of even just what's going on here. So I appreciate that too. So thank you, outstanding work, outstanding effort, and uh, we're very grateful that you're our town administrator. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can we do a round of applause? Yeah. <laughs> well, Madam Chair, may I offer just a brief couple of brief sure, comments. Of course. The first is with regard to your and other board members' comments regarding Mrs. Gilberto. She is a working mom, so she is not just balancing everything at home, but also um, her own career um, as well. Um, so I, I thank her and my, my three boys, too, for, for their flexibility, uh, Noah, Max, and Luke. Um, and then just finally, um, you know, the reflection here and all of the progress that we've made and sometimes just surviving over the past year and a half <coughs> is all a reflection of an excellent team here. I mean, I, I'm the face that's here at the meeting, you know, every other Monday or Wednesday. And, um, you know, they, are, they all work so hard from the employees in this building, the department heads in the library, the senior center, police fire, and DPW. Um, you know, I just, I, 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 I try to make sure I, I remember every day their, their efforts. And um, I hope that the, the community does as well. I know we have a very great community that has been very <coughs> appreciative of everything that all of our employees have done. But I just wish to thank all of the employees for, for their efforts in a difficult time, being flexible, like we have all had to have, have been, you know, moving one way, then moving another. And it's going to be this, now it's going to be that. Um, they've all been great. And I just I really want to thank them, thank them all for their, their commitment and their, um, their dedication and their flexibility. But to the board members, thank you. All right. <coughs> you just heard my points. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Gilberto. We're going to move on to legal bills. We Madam, have a motion. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for July 2021 in the amount of 8749 as follows. General, 448558 Labor, 4223 20 Elm Street, 41 dollars Total, 8749 Second. Motion by Mr. Studer. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is that the only legal bill? Mm -hmm. That's it. All right. Next order of business is meeting <coughs> minutes. Do we have a motion? So I have a question. I didn't see the minutes in the packet. Were, the, that, were those the ones I was supposed to send and amend it? Yeah. Some of them were, Madam Chair, but I, I, were the August 16th meeting minutes not in there no, either? No, no, Nothing no. in there. Okay, then I guess we're passing that over tonight. Thank goodness, because I didn't get to send you money. Okay. I apologize to the board, but no, they were done. That's okay. 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 But, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm sorry. Next order of business is the town administrator. We'll move right along. Town administrator's report. And Madam Chair, just bear with me because my report is somewhat lengthy, given the time between the last <coughs> Now, first, I attached a copy of a letter that I recently sent at the recommendation of the town planner, which released the balance of funding from our microenterprise grant program, um, which the town has been participating in for the past year. This is a very specific program. You need to have a certain number of employees. Your income number level needed to be at a certain <coughs> level as well. And um, I think we did everything we could to reach out to folks, the small group that were eligible, and we did have a handful that took advantage of it. Um, the interest from the town subsided and the funds will be made available to the other communities that are in the program. Again, this was a regional program with a number of communities. Um, I do want to recognize Danielle. Um, I know she's not here this evening, but she worked to just put this program together just because there was an, a need and it was an opportunity. She just picked it up and did it. Uh, you know, she, her work was quiet. I know we advertised the program, but I want to thank her for her, her work. Um, I will skip over the announcement of the MSBA funding because we already spoke to that. Um, the town will observe the 20th anniversary of the September 11th, 2001 attacks this Saturday, September 11th. Um, the annual September 11th remembrance at the fire department will begin promptly at 9.55 a.m. And the public may observe from the parking area in front of the station or from the sidewalk across the street on the common. Brief moments of silence will then be observed in front of Flint Memorial Library at approximately 10.15 a.m 
in memory of the civilians who were injured or lost their lives in the attack <coughs> and our veterans who were injured or lost their lives defending our country in response to the attack. The public is invited to also view the September 11th educational exhibition at Flint Memorial Library following the observance or during the regular library hours anytime between now and September 15th. Um, you just simply go to the library and they'll be able to direct you right to it. Um, I will note that Bow Street will be closed from Park Street to Haverhill Street beginning at 9.30 a.m. on that Saturday. Parking is available behind the library, although it is limited due to the ongoing construction project, but also at the third meeting house with overflow parking available at the Batchelder School. Observances will be held outdoors, rain or shine, and the ex exhibition is on display indoors. Um, we're working with the town's consulting engineers for uh, a refined report relative to the intersections at Haverhill and Chestnut Street, Park and Central Street, North and Central Street, and Park and Concord Street. Um, these intersections were funded in a study that um, was funded through the state <coughs> FY2021 um, operating budget. The um, study in traffic county took place in the spring and early summer. Um, there's a draft of the report that we've looked at and commented on and will be forthcoming for the board to review um, as well as uh, for the Capital Improvement Planning Committee to review. Um, I should note that the chair asked me about this in, in advance of the last meeting, and Park I had all those information. What's that? Mr. What's that? Park and Central. Park and Central, yes. Did I misspeak? That's, is that on there? It is, yes. Okay. So uh, Chestnut and uh, so Haverhill and Chestnut. Haverhill and Chestnut. Park and Central. North and Central. Very dangerous. And Park and Concord Streets. So those are the four intersections that we looked at, um, or, or that we had looked at. Um, I will. Um, just note that we provided some comment back and we're expecting a final report soon um, with regard to it. And when I say soon, um, you know, probably weeks, not, not months. And we'll be expecting to see some capital improvement planning projects associated with this submitted for consideration for the committee. So I just would let the two members on that committee know that you expect <coughs> to see something in there for that. Um, I know that there's a lot of questions and concerns about these intersections and we have been working you know, towards having this. And yeah. I think we're gonna be at a point where we'll at a minimum, be able to do some short-term improvements and certainly be able to request funding for any long-term improvements. I'll just note that construction to replace siding on the Flint Memorial Library has begun. I'm sure anyone who's driven by there has seen that the siding has been removed on the lower portions of the building and a portion of the parking lot has been blocked off. Some spots are open um, in the back that can be used. Uh, the activity room is closed and entry is through the front entrance or the rear entrance on the north side of the building but the activity room itself has been uh, closed because it's just not, not feasible to be accessed. Um, <coughs> after some delay, construction of the additional locker facilities in the police station will be beginning in, uh, in the coming days. The location was modified slightly um, to move it closer to existing locker facilities and it will remain within the existing building footprint of the police department. Um, I'll note with regard to Mill Street, Mr. O'Leary, I know that you brought that up at the last meeting and I think I spoke with you after. A couple of department heads went out there after our department head meeting on Wednesday um, to try to clarify some questions about what the building inspector could sign off on for uh, dividing the parcel up, if you will. We retain a portion that's sort of up upland and sell the area that's closer to the river where the house is located. I think a resolution's been reached with regard to what we're going to do. It's just a matter of now going back to the Planning Commission, hopefully as soon as their next meeting in two weeks from last night, to get um, some approval in place. But I think we have a plan. It will involve the construction of a gravel road um, as part of the dividing of the property. But I think the DPW is confident it can be done at, at a very reasonable expense so we can then convey and sell the, the house lot itself. So I think we have a plan for that moving forward. Um, and I know that there's been a lot of you know, concern about that. The market is obviously very hot. hot. Um, the house um, in good condition. I'm not sure whether it'll be conveyed you know, for occupancy or somebody will look to develop the property with a, a different style house. But um, I can tell you what they looked at it last week. It, looked, it was you know, not perfect, but certainly good and Great. not abandoned by any stretch of the imagination. Great. Um, and then finally, a couple of personnel uh, announcements. And I, I know the hour is late, but I have two letters that I'd like to read from department heads who have informed me of their uh, intention to retire. Um, and they're two um, you know, well-respected and long-serving employees. If the board would indulge me just for a moment. First, I'll take them in order of uh, written receipt. How's that? Um, from Mary Prenny, the Elder Services Director, informing me of her pending retirement from the town of North Reading, effective January 4th, 2022. 
She, want, she writes, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for the chance to serve the town of North Reading as Director of Elder Affairs for the past 21 plus years. It's been a privilege to work with so many wonderful colleagues. Most importantly for me, it's been a true honor to help serve so many incredible, amazing older residents and their families that I had the pleasure to meet throughout these many <coughs> years. Saying this, I am now ready to start that new chapter in my life. Thank you for all your support, guidance, and cooperation. Please let me know how I can assist in ensuring a smooth transition for the department and my staff. Sincerely, Mary Prenny. So there will be an, an opportunity to fully recognize um, Mrs. Prenny, uh, I'm sure, at a, at a future date. But I, I do want to put that out there because this is a position we will begin um, adjusting the job description with Mary's input as needed and then um, advertising the position moving forward. So the public will see that as an advertised vacancy and I'd ask them just to be aware of that. The second uh, been notified by town clerk Barbara Stats of her notice of retirement. Um, as previously discussed several months ago, this is to advise you my intention to retire from my service to the town effective on Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022. So they'll be within about a month of each other, two long-standing department heads who um, are at the stage and eligible for retirement. She writes, it's been 40 plus years since I started on this journey, never expecting to, it to take me where I am today and for what will have been almost 24 years as town clerk. It's an amazing feat. It's been a journey unparalleled by any other in my life, and I am sincerely grateful to have had the opportunity to leave this office and to achieve some of my visions during this time, which has certainly gone by all too quickly. It is my sincere hope that this office has been considered a dependable and reliable source of information and assistance to the townspeople and the public, as well as a welcoming site for new residents. I'm deeply appreciative for the opportunity provided by administrations and officials, both past and present, to represent this office for so long and for their continued support and hope at the least. I have met their anticipated anticipation and expectations and have been a resource to assist them with their responsibilities as well. If so, I will consider this journey a successful one. As you know, this is a decision I've considered seriously and deeply for some time, and although I am certainly looking forward to what the future will bring, I will nonetheless miss serving and helping those who have come to rely on this office for guidance and assistance, and especially the relationships and daily interactions with the townspeople, town officials, and my fellow co-workers. So um, I just wish to sort of make the community aware that um, you know, we have some time with these um, outstanding individuals here, but they will be transitioning and there will be again an, an opportunity for the board and the community to rec recognize these individuals. Uh, a third transition, which we spoke briefly of um, and, and had a substantial recognition of last meeting, Maureen Stevens has, uh, has retired, her last day has come and gone, and uh, I'm pleased to inform the board that um, Marty Tilton, who's our Parks Director, will take on the responsibilities as uh, department head for the meeting. Um, Maureen's operations manager responsibilities, in addition to her, so she was the department head and operations manager. Marty will take on the department head responsibilities, and Maria Brown, who was the administrative assistant in the office, will take on the operations manager responsibility, so we will have a, an anticipated vacancy in the administrative assistant position in that office. Um, I really want to thank the, the staff, particularly Marty, Maria, Lynn, and Nancy Orsino, who's the programmer, for their patience. It did take us some time to sort of sort everything out, um, but we did so um, over the course of uh, the past couple of weeks, and that's the structure that we anticipate having uh, moving forward, and I, I want to thank them, and I want to thank the representatives of the Parks and Recreation Committee, Rita Mullen and Ron Kern for their, for their feedback um, and, their, uh, and their guidance. Um, so um, with that, I think that concludes my update for this evening, Madam Chair. I know it was lengthy and I appreciate it. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? I do. I just have one. I know that we're studying whether or not there should be traffic implements in those intersections, and I, I really don't understand what the study needs to be because it's, they're very dangerous. So, mm -hmm. And we have to wait, and we have to go to capital planning after a study if there's any kind of a recommendation, you know, that type of thing. But what are we able to do now by way of signage and maybe fluorescent paint and you know, some sort of slowdown or something in that area because there's so many accidents. Someone's going to get killed there. And really that is such a dangerous, you know, people kind of barrel up, barrel up that road so they're not even attentive to, never mind bicyclists or walkers, but other cars that are trying to come in and out. And I'm talking specifically about Park and Central. 
it's less so at the end of, of Central and where where on Central and Haverhill Haverhill connect. It's a little bit easier to come out there, but that that is such a dangerous area, and I don't know how many accidents have to happen before we do something about it. So I can tell you that there are some interim recommendations that are in there, and that there is a. a a portion of funding available from uh, the state for this current fiscal year in the amount of, I believe, $50,000 that we can tap into to try to make those types of short-term improvements that you've identified. Um, you know, we're hoping to do so um, as soon as um, within this construction season. Um, there are some, you know, larger concerns with regard to alignment at that intersection, as I'm sure you're aware. Um, that would not be part of that, but um, we'll look to do everything that we can in short order as soon as we can do it, um, because we know the concerns. What would those kind of recommendations be? Like I'd have to refer to the stop report. Stop signs or, or um, stop signs? I, I don't believe that there was a recommendation for adding any stop signs. There may be some notification further back mm -hmm. as to uh, the stop signs upcoming, but I, I really would want to have the report in front of me to speak mm -hmm. to the detail. Yeah. I think we shouldn't be delaying that. I think in, well, with these sections that we know are dangerous, we should pull out all the stops now and, uh, you know, if the study is should we hang a traffic light there, I get that that might be a little time consuming mm -hmm. and there might be permissions that are required. But, you know, how long does that take to study that? You know, and how long is it? We should really need to do something every before someone gets killed. Mm -hmm. and, and people are getting in car accidents there. That should really be enough for us to know something has to be done there. Now, <coughs> don't yeah. wait. Why As waiting? to the timing, I, I can say that we, we, I believe we received the report three weeks ago. We met with a consultant roughly a week and a half ago, and we're expecting their, their updates any day now. And, and again, you know, the commitment is to do what we can within the confines of this construction season as soon as we can do it. Um, and we do have, we're fortunate we have funding in place to do it too, which is obviously a huge help. Um, that was not a location that was necessarily identified for a, you know, a straight traffic signal, you know, stop, stop light, so to speak. Um, of the four intersections, the one that was identified for that was um, Haverhill and um, Chestnut um, due to some of the complexities there. But again, we'll provide the board the, the, whole, the whole report and we can certainly determine how we want to proceed. Okay. All right. Any other questions? All set? All right. Let's move on to our board member reports and our old and new business. Mr. O'Leary? Okay. Let's see. Sorry, Mr. Kelleher left. Uh, Secondary School Building Committee, I reported to the board the last meeting that the Secondary School Building Committee uh, voted to expend what is it, $150,000 uh, for uh, ancillary, auxiliary lighting on some of the fields. And uh, Mr. Kelleher, who has been a member of the Secondary School Building Committee since its inception, and uh, nobody has put in let me put it this way. There are a lot of people who put in a significant amount of time and effort and energy to the Secondary School Building Committee and continues to do so up until a week or two ago when he um, resigned uh, from, the, from the committee. Uh, it's, a, it's a tremendous loss. Uh, Don has decided uh, out of frustration. Uh, and again, I don't mean to be putting words in his mouth. I'm sorry he's not here. But uh, he found it necessary protest the action of the Secondary School Building Committee uh, to resign. And that is extremely unfortunate and a tremendous loss to the committee. Now, again, most of our work is done, uh, but we still have to close out uh, the project. Uh, he has been invaluable, and I'm confident that he will continue to offer his assistance, advice, and, and counsel, but not in an official capacity. I just think that the public uh, should know that uh, the action that he found necessary to take. And I personally uh, think it's a significant loss to the committee, community, and uh, he shouldn't have had to feel necessary to end his term on the secondary school building committee without it being concluded. So I uh, just figured I would make the, give the board an update, and we will be asked to um, vote to uh, replace him. The finance committee, I think, is going to be uh, recommending uh, Mr. Pulver to uh, fill out the, the term. Uh, and he'll serve well and be a wonderful addition to the committee also. But again, I just think it's uh, unfortunate that Mr. Keller found it necessary to take the action that he did. 
Um, Board of Health, uh, again, they had a meeting a couple of weeks ago. I uh, got the updates on the uh, on some of the numbers as well as uh, in between the last meeting and this meeting. Um, DESE, the state agency that oversees the schools, uh, instituted an action which the Board of Health uh, basically embraced because they didn't take any further actions or further restrictions um, as to um, the masking at, at schools. Uh, they are continuing to monitor uh, the activities. They will be meeting next week. Uh, they're going to give uh, the school a week to see how uh, things, uh, if there are any transactions or any transmissions, uh, and then they'll look at it again, study the numbers and see what happens and see if, see if there has to be any other additional action taken at the local level uh, to address uh, the situation in the school system. Of course, they're uh, concerned with uh, the community as a whole, you know, just the school system. And if you haven't heard it yet, but over the most recent two-week time period uh, associated uh, with tracking uh, positivity rate and uh, threading of the number of cases, we've had 75 cases. And over a two-week time period, our positivity rate is 5.08% which is well above the 2.74 of the state. Uh, so they're monitoring that and concerned. Um, but a good report that they gave is that there have been no um, cases recently up at the nursing home. So the board should be aware that they're continuing to monitor it. They will uh, continue to evaluate and uh, take whatever action is necessary uh, from a local level and a local standpoint uh, moving forward. Uh, that, that's it for my reports. Yeah. Well, you're old new business. We're going to go around again, round robin. Yeah, we'll go ahead on to old and new business. All right. Um, let's see. There'll be a vaccination clinic at the Bachelor School on the 15th of this month from 6 to 7 p.m. Um, go to the town website, Board of Health. You can actually sign up, get an appointment to do so. Um, for anybody ages 12 and up. So uh, they did have a clinic uh, previously, and I think they had nine uh, individuals come, a lot of them students, uh, which was good. And again, as far <coughs> as the, um, so we want to ensure that people understand that vaccination clinic is still available in town here, and they'll continue to do so at different intervals, and just continually uh, check the, the, town, the town website. Um, Apple Festival coming up Saturday the 18th. Um, Mrs. Gonzalez and I are going to put our taste buds to the test and uh, judge the apple pie, uh, apple pie contest along with Mr. Gonzalez, not Gonzalez. <laughs> and uh, just urge people to come out. It's a wonderful activity and uh, hopefully uh, the numbers stay good enough so that we can continue on and enjoy the, the, enjoy the festivities. Obviously, you know, last year it was canceled. Um, I'd also just like to, on the old and new business, I'd like to um, follow up on the Board of Health and masking and uh, a couple of other things. Um, Twenty years ago, I was chairman of the board when 9-11 uh, occurred. And uh, I saw the, uh, this community come together uh, like never before, again, the nation as a whole. And we had local residents who were uh, impacted by 9-11 by having family members uh, and associates, work associates, uh, die on, on that particular kind of the event. Um, it was heartening at the time when we saw the community come together as a nation to where we had uh, you know, economical, uh, uh, ecumenical services together uh, where hundreds of people showed up. We had. Uh, uh, vigils on the football field where the stands were full and the community was united uh, in our efforts, the nation's effort to combat the terrorism, go after those that uh, inflicted a uh, terrible thing upon us and it was heartening. So as I, th as I think back and 9-11 is just a Saturday and we're going to have uh, recognition as we do every year, you know, it, it, it's important. But at the same time, I kind of fast forward and say, okay, you know, 20 years later, I'm still sitting here. And, you know, what have we seen or what have we uh, felt and 
lived through. And again, when fast forward to you know, the past 18 months with the pandemic, mm -hmm. but also the response to 9-11. You know, we went into Afghanistan and now we've gotten out of Afghanistan. You know, and over that time period, you know, we remember the 2,448 service members that died and we uh, honor them and respect them and uh, mourn them and mourn the losses for their family and family members. And the 3,846 U.S. consultants that died over a 20-year time period, including the 2,448 of the 13 soldiers that died uh, just last week um, when we were trying to exit the Kabul airport. And, and setting aside, you know, the, uh, the exit strategy, um, and therefore, which I, I too, am critical of. Uh, these 13 soldiers didn't die in vain. So again, we, we mourn all of that. And, and then over the last 18 months, we've experienced in the, this, this pandemic where we had a tremendous appreciation for the first responders, the doctors, the nurses. When you think back, you know, where were we you know, a year ago March? Where were we last March? Um, some of us seem to forget that, you know, just two, three months ago, our kids weren't in school. They weren't in the school system. They weren't in the classroom. Um, we were celebrating at 7 o'clock every night, blue lights on, applauding our nurses and doctors who were working around the clock to, to treat people uh, who were afflicted by uh, this virus. And what, what's concerning to me now is, is the when I, when I look back 20 years and how united we were, and I look at today, when we face a pandemic that we haven't seen in 100 years, how divided we are with each other and fighting with each other over uh, an, an enemy that you know, we can't go and invade. You know? But there are certain things, certain steps that we can take as a community, as a state, as a nation, you know, that that can unite us again and get us back to, to some sense of normalcy. You know, th this past summer, the numbers dropped significantly. It was wonderful. So things are working. You know, the virus is, the, uh, the vaccinations are kicking in. The numbers dropped significantly. Um, and then all of a sudden, we see a resurgence. And what we see in this resurgence, the magnitude of it, the current surge, was pretty much avoidable. You know, if, if, and again, it, it's inconvenient. You know, it, it's, it's a pain in the neck. Um, my wife and I you know, finally went out to a restaurant about a month ago for the first time in 18 months under the tent of the horseshoe, you know, um, and broke bread with some friends, which was great, you know, for the first time in 18 months. Now we're at a point where we have to be concerned again, where business establishments are now starting to talk about, again, masking, vaccination requirements, you know, all because we as individuals can't do what just has to be done. You know, which is mask up, do it a little bit longer, and we'll get a little bit better. You know, we'll get better more quickly. You know, we, we sat in the Board of Health meeting, listened to another school committee meeting over the last few weeks, you know, where people were calling in and you know, participating um, via Zoom and at the meeting of the school committee and insisting, you know, that there be no mask mandate in the school system, and insisting and trying to, some of them, again, not everybody, but some of them trying to bully our town officials and administration people into taking an action which is just totally contrary to what we should be doing as a community together. And what I find interesting is some of those same people who were advocating for no masks, once Desi came out with their, their ruling, are some of the very same people that are saying that everybody should be masked now. So be consistent somewhere along the way here. I believe, and this is my thought, and I, I, I'm not looking to debate with anybody and pick them, take, say get your own position. There's more that we can do. We shouldn't just be sitting idly by here and waiting for Desi to make a decision when we know what needs to be done. We have employers that are telling people that they have to be vaccinated in order to come back to work. We have businesses that are saying you have to be vaccinated to come into the community, to come into their, their workplace. 
we have businesses that saying that you have to wear a mask in order to come in here, vaccinated or unvaccinated at this point because this Delta variant is so transmission, transmissible. So, you know, masking restrictions, and people who are unvaccinated are concerned about their civil liberties uh, being taken away from them. Mr. I'm sorry. I don't mean to no, no, sorry, this is one more minute. Yeah, one more minute. One more minute. One more minute. You. But it's yeah. to me, you know, I think as an administration here, we have a responsibility to our employees and people should be vaccinated and people should be masked. We're sitting at this meeting here, I believe public spaces, public meeting, we're requiring our kids to be masked. People at public meetings and public spaces should be masked. And we can take those steps on our own, not waiting for someone else to tell us to do it. So for those who are worried about, you know, the civil liberties of being violent. It's not just civil liberty, you know, to catch or transmit a potentially fatal inf infection. And it's not a personal choice. It's a choice that you make that affect others. So, I'm sorry. You know, I think we need to take stronger action. I think this administration should take stronger action. And I think we should just use some common sense and logic and spend the next few months putting the mask on, do some, just use some common sense some common courtesies, and let's get back to the community that together tries and defeats this, uh, this virus. Because if we do it, there won't be another barrier that we have to worry about. It'll just become the locals with another shot, another shot in the eye like a flu shot. But if we don't do that, we're gonna be fighting this thing and more people are gonna die. So as we celebrate and honor the people that died in Afghanistan, the people who uh, gave their lives for all these, you know, let's not forget that there were almost 18,000 people in Massachusetts, which is greater than the entire population of North Reading, that have already passed away in Massachusetts, wiping out the whole town of North Reading over the last 60, over the first 16 months, not 18 months. Would that be okay? Would we just be sitting here? You know, let's quantify. A thousand people dying a day. Hospitalizations are up. Doctors and nurses are working 24 hours again, and nobody's, nobody's celebrating. You know, nobody's saying thank you, nobody's applauding. So let's just do our part, <coughs> use some common sense, take some action that we can take, and do what's right. So thank you for your thank indulgence. You, Mr. Mr. Walner. I've been on vacation for the last <laughs> week and a half, so. <laughs> for you. <laughs> and All nothing, right. Nothing to report in particular. Okay. I, I'll just, one thing I'll say, just to Steve's comments, is that uh, one of the commandments is, uh, treat your neighbor as you would treat yourself, love your neighbor as you would love your, yourself. The virus does demand community action. You have to go beyond yourself. So that's, I think that's the main message. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Studo. And I will add one commentary to that. Um, unfortunately, we have hit a point where we'd have to go back to more than that. And I'll just say this. I know about 100 different property owners in Boston that own restaurants and bars. They've had a mask mandate since August 27th. So Mr. O'Leary, this is what happens. You walk in with the mask, you go to the bar, you order a drink, and for the next five hours, you don't need one on. There's no enforcement. So what I'm trying to say is that unfortunately, and I'll leave it at this, some of the mitigation things that did work earlier in the pandemic, there is not the will, in my opinion, for what I've seen in Boston the last three weeks of the general population and since every single law enforcement group I know of has said, we will not enforce this, it's your problem, I think that, to your point, I think it, there's very little I feel this administration can do because of where I think the population in general is at. So I'll just add that. So that's why, just, just to give a little leeway, you know what I mean? So. Any other? No, other than that, um, board business, I, uh, business? no, I, uh, so September 11th to, to me means a lot for, for the reason that it used to be just another day, my birthday, it is September 11th. And then uh, unfortunately, I was going to class at BU, if you remember these things, and BU never canceled school, even if somebody, if it was negative 20 degrees. And so now it's something where, um, you know, it has a special meaning that it's a day where, you know, it's not just for celebration, but also for remembering that, you know, we, we did we did have like a tragedy. So mm -hmm. I do think that uh, it it's incumbent that generations after us don't forget it, because I feel like a lot of bad historical events get forgotten. You know, time can do that to you. So 
I just uh, I do think that uh, you know what we're doing in town is something very nice. So, and I would encourage everyone to attend more just because, again, it's uh, a lot of good people died that day, and a lot of kids that I went to school with lost family members because BU had a very large New York population. So I, uh, you know, it's something where, you know, it hits a little closer to home. So that's it. This is Gonzalez. So I'll start with board member reports. Um, I will also talk about the Apple Festival, Saturday the 18th from 10 to 3. Um, as liaison to the newly um, formed Putnam House Property Committee, um, we were able to procure a flag from Representative Jones to be raised on that day on their brand new flight bowl that the militiamen were able to put up. So that'll be a great um, thing to be there to watch. I believe it'll be after the pie tasting contest that Mr. O'Leary and I will indulge in and I can take that off my bucket list. Where's this going on? Like everybody's eating <laughs> pie because I didn't hear about this. Oh yeah, you can buy a piece of the pie after it's right at the Putnam yep, House, Putnam yep. House property. What day? Saturday, Saturday the 18th. 18th. So I get to watch you two try yeah, to pound. No, no, we're just going to taste these oh. pie and judge oh, them. We're judging the good pies. Oh, oh I thought it was pie. like an eating pie. Okay. Because that would have been oh, well, I would have cleared the calendar season. for that. And the bees would be there in mass. Uh, yeah. the uh, but the get there pies. early yes. because there's only so many of those homemades to go around and then you get the store bought, which always happens to me. So <laughs> get online early. Which is why I was willing to volunteer. That's right. I'm getting the real one. the homemade stuff. So, yeah, that's a great take. It's, um, there'll be pony rides and there's vendors and, you know, you can start your Christmas shopping and you can tour the historical building. So um, it's, it's a great take, family, community activity. So I encourage everybody to attend that. Um, and then I'm just going to, I can't help it. I know that hour is late, but I need to just counteract and not, and I don't want to go into a debate, but I, I just feel like there's some points that I need to, we stand very differently, everybody knows that, um, on, on a lot of things. So three points I just need to bring up. Um, our heroes on September 11th, our heroes through COVID, our doctors, our nurses, our police, our first responders, are now going from heroes to zeros. If you don't vaccinate, you lose your job, you're fired. I think that's disgusting. Um, these doctors and nurses worked through COVID without vaccines, and now they're told, gonna be told to leave their job. So um, I, I feel very differently about that. Uh, I feel it is a personal choice. And, you know, um, as far as I need to clarify the people who were now saying full masks when they were saying no masks, and that is because, as it is written from DESE, once 80% of vaccinations um, are fulfilled in the school, the vaccinated kids will be able to take their masks off, where the unvaccinated won't, and it will just, it has bullying written all over it. Um, so that's the avoidance of that. It, it, we're either gonna, the, the kids should either all unmask or all mask. So we're going, that's where they're standing on the full mask. Not changing because if you take some kids who are and some kids who aren't, and how do you even know who is or isn't? It's just, it's a mess. It should be all or nothing. And kudos to them for going all and not nothing. So I, I think they should be applauded for that. Um, and, and also the fact that that mask means nothing. Unless you have an N95, science shows that that mask really isn't helping you. So, um, it's more to help you, not me. That's great, oh, and I appreciate that. That's good. Glad you did. And um, that is it. Oh, oh, and I was at the feast, and the governor was walking in and out of restaurants with no mask while everyone else had to have one on. So, I'll just leave it at that, and we'll 
move on to me? All righty. <laughs> let, me, let me go now. Can I just clarify on the flagpole? On the flagpole. Yes. On the flagpole. Right. On the flagpole. Wiki, the minute, it's I know the Minute Militia, you know, we we're, were able to put That's up a new flagpole. Wonderful. And that flagpole is an old flagpole. Oh. It's the flagpole that was on the common that blew down several years ago. It was once a mast on a ship. That's a flagpole that was on the common for years that finally blew over in a storm. It was down the GPW yard. We were able to secure it to the militia. They put it down and they awesome. put it down there. So that's the same flagpole that was on the car. See, so the right. wealth of knowledge. Now you just Good made me think of one more thing. And I'm going to keep, okay. I'm going to go rapid fire here. Number one, we should bring back that, is it the walking stick? It used to get passed around. It is. Yeah. It's coming back. The talking oh, stick. Oh, get the stick. Oh, which was it? Well, talking. Oh, My Girl Scouts used to oh, use it. Okay. Yeah. But are we going to bring that back into it? The cane. You're talking about the cane. The, the Boston well, Post cane? Yeah. The wait, yes. Wait, like like you got to wait to get the... you got to wait till you have the stick to talk. Oh, is that what you're talking no. about? You're talking oh, about the Boston um, Post no. cane? What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen one of those since Mr. Tudor in kindergarten. You know, you had to take... No, no, no. Only talk is, if you had the teddy bear. This is for the oldest member of the right. community. It's coming back. And then oh, if they, okay. they are deigned with the, the stick. When is that coming back? We have to stop doing That's that. That's a real thing. I think it's... It's yeah. coming back it's maybe at the Apple Festival. Lori the Master was working on that. Yes, that was her she project. was. And actually, the Apple Festival... It has been acquired... And it is ah. ready to be produced. What's the, what is it called? It's the Boston Post cane. Boston Post. Boston Post. Uh, Boston too bad Post we can't name it after her. Boston Post. We should. We should. I think right, we should. That's good. I hope they do something at the Apple Fest to recognize her because she was always on historical guard. Yes, I can remember yes. her sitting there yeah. proudly. Oh yeah. You yes. know. There will yes. be a there will be a, a display there. There will be T-shirts for sale. That's to great. Honor oh, that's, that's great. great news. We should do that's a little publication about that because that's a. That's also an interesting, it was a North Reading tradition. For until, a long, until it disappeared. Long time. And so. it disappeared. This, the cane disappeared. The cane. <laughs> so it walked out the door. So, we so have, that's a good one to bring So back. we're going to have a replace there. It will be a replace right. for cane. That's good news. Second, for, I am not sure which one to go. I'm going to go with my, my one report because you, by the time it gets to me, you've reported on all the things I want to report on. So, so I was not happy to read that letter of resignation from Don Kelleher, because I really feel like he's kind of, he really holds on to the purse strings tightly and for the purpose for which the money is to be spent. It's the vote you told us you did not vote in favor of that, but it was also a meeting. He had another commitment, so he missed, which is very unusual, and the majority of the members went ahead and voted anyway. And You know you really need those voice of reasons when you're taking those kind of important votes, especially when you've manned the till this entire time and maintained the till for a specific purpose that it was meant for. And I'm not saying that lights aren't a good thing, but maybe from another source than what that source was for. So that was very disappointing because his input is really incisive. All right, and then the other just really quick report I wanted to give you is um, that the it looks like the Master Facilities Planning Committee has received a really tight um, schedule of completion of tasks by the architect. So they're going to be, they, they've already started looking at some facilities and they're going to be doing this pretty concise meeting between September and March. So we'll hopefully be rolling on that and being able to report more information after all those um, reviews are done and analysis is done in the town, the town buildings. And um, just I'll just briefly say with regard to masks and coronavirus that there is there is a remarkable amount of misinformation that gets presented, um, you know, and that I think that that there's a, all of these differences. If we just had kind of solidarity with how everybody's doing things, there wouldn't be this sort of divisiveness. I don't think. I think that that was generated divisiveness over the previous administration. And I do believe that there was an awful lot of misinformation. There still is an awful lot of information. I, I happened upon a, a broadcast where a doctor was telling a panel that the, the, the vaccine injects HIV and uh, some sort of bio, bio weaponry into, and it's, it's, 
and, and, it's, and it was being gobbled up by the panel of, of women that were just listening to this doctor explaining something that's remarkably wrong, remarkably wrong. And if you, I don't understand this, I don't understand this RNA technology, so I have to go to people that do, and I have to go to people that read the data, and the way I understand it, from a woman in town who's a microbiologist who happens to be someone I walk with every once in a while, when you have the vaccine, it either addresses mortality or it addresses infection. So if it reduces the mortality, it might not necessarily reduce the rate of transmission of the infection. If it reduces infection, it might not necessarily reduce the rate of mortality. So what we have is that the mortality rates are reduced, which we've seen, that's data. That's data-driven statistic. You can't argue that. That's a fact. But the flip side of that is, with this insidious COVID-19 is it doesn't necessarily address the infectious nature, and that's why we have the variants. And if you have kids who can't get the vaccine, you have to mask because that's unfair to them because the insidious nature of this is when we started out and didn't have a vaccine, they were the safest ones. They had the built up immunity towards this. And now that everyone's got the vaccine, we're basically super spreaders for, for our children and it's flipped and that's the insidious nature of it. And that's the facts, that's the science. There's no two ways about that. So we, I agree that we should really be in solidarity. We can disagree on things and we do disagree on things. But I, I, what I appreciate about my colleagues is it's a respectful disagreement. <coughs> what I'm watching posted on social media and programs is people coming in screaming at boards and yelling and demanding things and calling people names and things like that. That's just uncalled for. I don't think a single person sitting in this room wants anyone to die from COVID, wants anyone to get COVID. We all are on the same mission, and we really have to start to see that kind of stop being divided about this. And we're being divided because of all the wrong information that's being spread about things. Just look at the facts, look at the science. And, you know, yet last night I was in another public meeting for my job, and we are masked. So I think there's a lot of divisiveness because we're not in solidarity with how we're going to approach it. And that's all I have to say about that. I have to hear what science tells me, and I have to understand it. I still don't fully understand it, but that's where we need to go with these things and not just, you know, say things that aren't accurate, you know. And there's not enough data, too, so that's the other thing. So you have to go to the people that are studying the data. And we know it's working. We know the vaccine is working. So, and I do understand civil liberty and civil rights, and that is, a, that is an important thing, too. I do agree with that. but. I think the real reason why people keep arguing and d dividing one another and not being on the same page is all these just really, all this misinformation out there. That's totally unfortunate and that's totally a product of who was in charge when this pandemic came to, came to our country, unfortunately. But we're moving on from that and we're moving beyond that. My final thing is that. You said one, that's five. My final <laughs> thing is. No, I said, I said I have to start with that one. I think you miss her. It's being recorded. My final thing is I totally agree with my colleagues about the commemoration of uh, September 11th, which happens to be at my sister and my aunt's birthday, too. So there's positive things personally, but uh, negative things to, to really consider. I really do think that should be a national day of reflection. Uh, or recollection for us because it's was so far removed from it. People don't even think of it. They just think of it as another day now. And it was a pretty traumatic day for us to go through. Mm -hmm. we, were, we all went through it. So not, um, not to recognize that. I really appreciate that the town is doing something and that the fire department is doing something because we also not just lost a lot of civilians, we lost a lot of firefighters, we lost a lot of police who were going in to try to help. And again, like Mrs. Gonzalez said, they're the ones that come to our rescue all the time, right up to the pandemic. Those are the people that are out there without a vaccine, when there was no vaccine, 
try to help everybody. So I'm glad that we're doing something. You don't necessarily have to go to that ceremony to do something to commemorate the day. Go visit a veteran's grave or go visit a church or do whatever you do to commemorate the day. But I am glad that our community is going to be having something so that people can come together for that purpose. And uh, with that, we're going to call for a <laughs> Ma Madam Chair. motion to adjourn. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> Just a reminder, our next meeting is Monday evening, strategic Monday planning evening. meeting. That's okay. I, I don't it, know. We had it proposed for the police department's training room, the community room in the front of the building. Um, I just want to confirm a start time for board members and you know, our, our, we're willing and certainly able to provide dinner if board members are still comfortable with that beforehand. We can start at a time that works for everybody. So that that's Monday, right? Correct. The 13th, the 13th. I'm comfortable leaving in all occasions, in any <laughs> environment that anyone can think of, hey. in any room. <laughs> Oh, what was the, what's the preferred start time? I had 6.30. 6.30, okay. Great. 6.30 down. Great, and we'll have dinner there at, at 6.30 if folks would like, and we can get started. Great. And there. I even have it in my calendar, so I'm putting it in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this will be in the poli uh, police department community room, right? Yes. All right. And there will not be a virtual component to it. There will, nor will it be recorded. It will just be an in-person meeting, as it okay. customarily is, unless I'm instructed otherwise. <coughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, do I have a motion to Madam Chair, I move to adjourn. <laughs> Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Unanimous. Yes, it was.